Okay, we are live. I'm gonna send this, um, promote this a little bit here, put my Discord and everything. And feel free to, oh. uh, yeah, send same. the link same. as well. Posted it to Instagram on my story. Sweet, sweet. Okay, beautiful. I see your tweet. We're tweeting you. Right. Testing, testing, testing. Talk for me. Test, 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 testing. One, two, three. You have a great microphone, so like leveling is so much easier. Oh, okay, <laughs> it's, okay it's, great. It's so much Let's easier. Go. In fact, you might be a little louder than me, and that's fine. Oh, no. Okay. That's, no, that's absolutely fine. I'll just talk quieter. No, don't do that because it compresses, bro. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> it compresses your mic, and then it just sounds like ASMR. We can do ASMR if you want. Yeah, we. I guess we could do that. Yeah. We can do a little ASMR. But People are into that. What's your favorite pedal, bro? Uh, I don't have one. You don't have one? Okay. <laughs> well, <shit. laughs> no, <I'll> good. <laughs> well, hey, man. Um, yeah, let me let me just say thank you for having me. Thank you for putting this on. Yeah, of course, bro. Of course, bro. Uh, this is for those tuning in. Yo, we got heavy metal link, bro. What's popping? What's popping? This is Jerry Trevino. He corrected me because I'm pretty sure I called you Gary on stream. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, dude, it happens all the time. It's, it's like I, I'm the one that chose it to spell it so fucking weird or whatever. So it's just like you know, it's all it's all good. So for those that don't know Jerry, he does. He's playing the music in the background here. We're, we're uh, playing. Can you feel the sunshine? Heck yeah, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great one, man. Yeah, that was. Um, I did that with uh, with Georgie, who was a, a local artist um in las vegas um at the time mm -hmm. um and just uh like it, she, she just has like a i don't know like a kind of like i guess i don't want to say deeper because that sounds weird but like i don't know like lower register yeah not, I guess. not what is it is, is soprano like the word for it um i don't know you're asking the wrong guy Good yeah. thing this isn't about music or anything but, <laughs> but <laughs> Um, but yes, yeah, it was just like, oh, that's perfect. And she was way down for it. So yeah, I think it came out well. I think the mix could have been better, but whatever. The, the mix can always be better, bro. The mix can exactly. always be better. It's never done. Yeah, exactly. You just, you're like, okay, this is, it sounds good. And you sit on it for a few days. And like, cool. He sent out to the wild. And the best thing is, is that if it sounds bad to you years later, that means you've gotten better. Yeah. I mean, I guess. Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah. I kind of, the worst part is when you put out a new thing and you're like, uh oh. The old thing sounds way better. I've, than I've the new done thing. I've done so many things where like I release songs, especially on Spotify and or something, and I'm like, oh shit, dude, I left that in. Oh yeah, fuck. it's just yeah, it's very frustrating. So well, tell me about you. How long have you been doing um, music under the the Kamikaze bitch like moniker and stuff? And like, um, what would kick that off? So I started off using um, my last name as an alias uh, for a long time, and. Uh, I've been, I've been playing guitar, learning to play guitar since 2008, when I was about 14. Oh, wow. Nice. And then I uh, just kept on doing different things and trying different things. I did a few, like, Sonic things. I think it's, I worked with, uh, what was his name? Joshua Tapelli? Oh, he's cool. He's sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh I goodness. worked with him years ago before he got, like, super, super big. Like a long, oh, long God. time he ago. Me, he hit me up, like, I don't know, like two years ago or something now like hey let's do something and i'm like yeah i'm way down and then my mental health stopped <laughs> i don't know it just it's, it's, life happened yeah and i'm trying to rebound but like uh, man i gotta hit him back up but yeah he's amazing 
for sure. Yeah, I did stuff with him like a long time ago. Like I was still recording in Audacity and just learned how to double track. That's how long. Oh ago. my god, Audacity! Yeah, Yo. that's that's. Oh. A, I used to get my um, my computer swivel chair. Yeah. And oh heck yeah. I'd get my I get my computer swivel chair and my Sony Vio laptop and use the webcam mic against my cabinet to record stuff. Oh my god, that's that's crazy because I have like kind of. It's not the same, but like a similar thing. Like once mm -hmm. I like when I discovered like oh, you can record stuff or whatever, and, and you know I'm sure we'll get into like gear or whatever. But oh yeah, you know at the time I had a, you know I was like 14 or 13 or mm -hmm. whatever old power old I was, um, and I had a Line Six Spider Three um, combo amp, mm -hmm. which was like my favorite amp in the world because <laughs> it just had the insane channel and it was crazy, and whatever. And so like I don't know what it was, but there was some day where I like I looked at. You know the headphone output of the of the line six and mm -hmm. i'm like huh and then i looked at like the microphone input on my like hp computer or whatever it was and i'm like i'm betting if i can find a cable and plug that into there i can like record a sound and so like i found some cable and then i opened up windows movie maker and figured out how to like you know record enable whatever mm -hmm. back then and uh and then i hit record and i'm like oh my god like this is amazing and then like that's what started like my love of like just recording and like mixing and stuff yeah it's i, I remember upgrading from the the swivel chair laptop mic to a, a rock band usb mic <laughs> oh and, wow oh, that's so funny and my friend wow. gave me his and it, i still remember it was just an old beaten microphone it had like a monster sticker on it <laughs> i used to get that thing and like put it to my uh, i had a pv viper because it had all the different like channels and stuff on oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, very similar. There's just kind of like a combo like mm -hmm. modeling app. Yeah. I used to put that on there and start recording stuff, and I just had a blast like just layering stuff and learning how to double track and like understanding like what makes that modern guitar sound. You know. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. What's it called? Yeah, that was my thing too. Because like when I was growing up, learning, you know, different songs from different bands or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I would always look up the tabs, yeah, and I'd always see there was like a guitar one and a guitar two, and like. I don't know. I guess I was just young and dumb. And I'm like, how is it possible? How do you play both parts or whatever? And then I realized like, oh, you record them separately or whatever. And that's why there's two guitar players in the band. They play different parts or whatever. Yeah, it's super cool, man. I'm trying to think. Yeah. But tell me, tell me how you got started with the YouTube and eventually into the video game uh, slash Sonic stuff. How how'd that start for you? Yeah, for sure. Um, so like, I guess I've always, I mean. I, I love YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm on YouTube every day, you know? It's yeah, just, same it's, here. Just, I'm just on it, you know? Um, and it's so funny because it wasn't until very recently that I finally, like, got YouTube Premium or whatever. Yeah. Um, which is, like, great, right? Because you don't have to deal with ads or anything. But it's mm -hmm. like, oh, I've been subscribing to, like, Netflix and Hulu and all of these other things that I don't use, right? Mm -hmm. That I don't watch. And it's like, oh, but like the one thing that I do watch every day, I didn't have like whatever premium subscription or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I love YouTube and like, you know, I just I'm super influenced by like a bunch of people. So like, you know, um, I guess there's like two parts of me, I guess, that are like the, the creative aspects of like my my creative side, my, my creative brain or whatever. Like mm -hmm. I love gear and like guitars and pickups and amps and, and whatever. But then I also loved, um, like, video game music, right? And so, I, you know, in the early days of YouTube, I would love to see, you know, like, I don't know, somebody would play, like, the Mario Brothers theme or whatever, and you would hear, like, the music in the background. They're playing it on the radio or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're, just, like, playing on top of it with their guitar, and everything is just, like, camera audio or whatever, right? Yeah. And so, like, I would watch a bunch of that. Um, but then I discovered um, it was two people. It was... Um, I don't, I don't know if a lot of people remember um, CS Guitar 89. He was this, like, Swedish guy from mm -hmm. way back in the day. Um, and then the other more famous, um, obviously, is, is Family Jewels. Um, yeah. And, um, and those two, like, really kick-started, like, that whole, like, it was like, whoa, like, they're, it's, like, their own versions of the songs, and they're, like, recording everything. And, like, it just, like, kick-started, like, oh, my God, like, this can be... Um, like, I, I want to do that, too. Like, I want to be creative and turn it into, like, my own version or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's really what kickstarted that. Um, and so with the YouTube thing, I don't know. It's kind of like, I feel like my channel's kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. Like, I should really stick to, like, one thing or the other or, uh, I don't know, 
start like a new channel to I, I don't know whatever um but uh what's it called um yeah it started you know in the early days or like i started my my channel the one that i'm launching now um or that i'm using now was back in like 2014 yeah and you know when i watch those early videos it's like uh you know kind of cringe or whatever but um but now i feel like i've got you know i always wanted to, to get to a point where it was like i would i would feel comfortable um like releasing stuff or whatever mm -hmm. um and like you know i mean you do a bunch of sonic stuff you know and now i feel like a lot of people do a bunch of sonic stuff and i'm they not do. trying to tee it up like like oh like i like I, like i'm one of the first that did this or whatever but i remember at the time like you know there wasn't a whole lot of love for like sonic stuff which is crazy to um, think about now right Oh, because now it's like, I mean, because, I mean, he's got the best music or whatever, right? On yeah, top of that. let's get the best, and, like, you know, you know, lots and lots of stuff there to, like, work with, for sure. Yeah, and, um, but, like, you know, but it but it makes sense, because, like, you know, Mario and Zelda and whatever else, like, those, the, those are always going to get the most love, but, like, I don't know, I always wanted to do something, you know, uh, fun for Sonic, yeah. um, but in a way where I could, you know, like, I wanted to, to wait till, like, my skills were at a level where it was, like, acceptable, to release something that I can always look back on and like be proud of or whatever. So yeah. that's kind of how that started. That's tight, man. That's super tight. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how did you get started with YouTube and stuff? I mean, it was, um, you know, when I first started like recording music and, uh, my friend gave me the, the biggest pill of all time. He's like, Hey, have you heard of FL studio, bro? Like, nah, <laughs> man, I've never heard of it, man. I still use audacity. Yeah. Like, you should get FL Studio. I think it was like 11 or something at the time. It was super, super old. And mm -hmm. uh, I installed it and I saw the drum pattern machine. And I was like, bro, I can do drums? Yo, this thing has like a synth in it? Like, oh, whoa, oh, wow. hey, this is a whole new world, bro. Holy shit. And I, wow, would, I, would, awesome. I would just mess with that. You know, I would just mess with that and uh, just dabble. And I did a lot of stuff for uh, Friends's like, like projects, you know, a lot of original stuff. I really did more original stuff when I first started, you know? Oh, really? Yeah, I, I dabbled more with like, I would learn certain songs, you know? It's like, okay, I learned, I think the first riff I learned a guitar by myself was uh, the God Knows riff. Okay. And I, I learned that, I was like, okay, this is really cool, yeah, cool. And I started writing a little bit on piano at the time. I can't play piano, but I can like write and like find my way around the keyboard a little bit. Oh, I'm the, I'm the same, yeah. yeah. Like I wish I would have picked it up at some point to where I can be more proficient so I can like, I don't know, at least play a chord progression, mm -hmm. you know, semi-decently, but it's like, I know where the notes are. I can, you know, figure my way around it or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's super cool. What are, what are, what were some of your, like, um, um, your influences? Like what, do, you know, what were some of some of your favorite bands or artists that like inspired you to pick up the guitar? So the, the very first time I remember, um, looking to just even wanting to play the instrument was mm -hmm. I, I, my mom got me for Christmas. Uh, I wanted Sonic Adventure 2 because I rented mm -hmm. it from a movie gallery way back in the day. And I said, I want the Sonic game for Christmas. And she was like, okay, cool. So she got me Sonic Mega Collection instead. Wow. And at, the, okay. at the time I was like, ah, what, this isn't what I wanted. This is, this is old shit. I don't want this shit. The, the new shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but then I started playing it and um, they had like the extra section. And that's where I figured out about like Sonic CD because people, I think like younger people or people now don't realize that like Sonic CD had this mystique around it because you couldn't play it. Yeah, it's so, okay. I mean, we'll, I, I will get into Sonic stuff. Yeah, yeah, we definitely I, will, we definitely will. <laughs> for sure. And I don't yeah. want to like start off with like some weird hot take. And mm -hmm. I was just talking about this with my brother the other day. And I'm like, I don't know, like Sonic CD, I don't have a problem with that game. Yeah. Um, But I don't know, it's like, Personally, it's one of those games where I'm just like, I, like it's so beloved, and I just have never clicked with that game. Um, and I'm just like, like how how are there so many fans of this game when it was like impossible to play, right? Like, like not only did you need to have like a Genesis or a Mega Drive or whatever, but you also needed the the CD add-on and and buy the game. And I'm like, like how have I don't know how like I just don't see how it was like I don't know possible. That like it gained like such a like almost like a cult following. I don't know. I mean, it, I'm definitely it was just the it was just the mystique around it because you couldn't play it, you know. Yeah. So the only yeah. thing we knew about it was like, yo, dude, there's like time travel. There's like animation. It's like a fucking movie, dude. This shit's crazy. Yeah, yeah. This shit's and crazy. For sure, like if for yeah. for its time, especially. Yeah, like yeah. it's so layered and like, holy moly! But it was cool yeah, at the time. But like you know, when when it came out on, uh, I think the first accessible version of it was on 
Jim's collection, right? Yes. That's and then the one I, played. I played it and I'm like, oh, you know, it was cool at the time, right? It was super, super mm -hmm. cool. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I played it and as time goes on, you have like the, the Steam version, which is the one that, uh, well, besides the or Origins one that replaced it. Everyone played that one. And I'm like, you know what? This game, it's cool. It's cool and different. I like its style. Everybody loves its music yeah. and everything. But like, it's a different take because at the time, um, there was a split in the direction for the franchise, right? So while yeah. they were making Sonic 2 over in the US, they were making um, Sonic CD under Nato Oshima at the time. Okay. And they were just trying different like Sonic wasn't a like you had the first game, but we didn't know what what it was. What they they didn't know what it was gonna be. Like what is it gonna be yeah. for you know, going forward, you know, what direction is it gonna go in? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. so, so Sonic two was like just let's make Sonic one better. And then when you look at Sonic C D, it's it's extremely Japanese. It's extremely Japanese in its style yes. and everything. And yeah. uh, it's more of a labyrinth level of like it, they were like, okay, it's more about the platforming and the momentum when it comes mm -hmm. to, like, you're rewarded for momentum, and the, the hard part about that game, which I'm st I still suck at it super hard, is uh, you you get to the first um, future or past post, and it's pretty easy to, like, you know, get up to top speed for long enough, and then you go back, but then you have mm -hmm. to get really creative down the line to, like, actually yeah. access those areas. Um, yeah, it's a lot of, like, almost kind of, like, memorizing the stages and, like, knowing where the hazards are and where 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 you're going to gain gain this momentum and like mm -hmm. you know i haven't put in enough time into the game myself to where where i know where all those sweet spots are and that's yeah. and that's one of those things where if you don't stick with it then then you're not going to be like like you said like rewarded for like um like learning the layout and and mm -hmm. finding the places to, to get momentum and stuff and, and unlock the the true ending and things like that yeah it's super it's really strange, but anyway, to get back to the point, I saw those animations, and I heard that song, mm -hmm. but then it, w it was the ending version of it that did the wah, 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 and I was like, yo, that's oh, okay. that sounds cool. I want to do that. And I didn't know that was like a tremolo bar at the time. Yeah. I, was like, I was like, oh, yeah. that sounds, I want to do that. Yeah, so that was my first time like wanting to do it. Um, and obviously, Side Adventure 2 just... It was always in my head, like, man, I wish I could do this maybe one day. But it wasn't until I started taking guitar lessons. And mm -hmm. my my mom was taking me at the time because I was in uh, eighth grade. And I went to guitar lessons. She picked me up. I got in the car. She was, like, in there paying him for the lessons. And she came out and said, hey, I, I stole this for you. <laughs> it was a magazine off the, uh, the rack. And it was... She uh, stole a magazine for you? Yeah, she stole a magazine off the rack for me. Oh, my God. It's this old 2006... Uh, I guess it would be that old. It'd be like two years old magazine, but it had Eddie Van Halen on the cover. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I started, so it, it was like an anniversary thing talking about like how he did everything. And I started reading mm -hmm. and I'm like, bro, like I can use some of the music, but like this guy's, this guy's like an actual genius. Yeah. Like yeah, he's, yeah. he's like on, on the first record when he's doing the dive bombs and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, he had a normal tremolo bar because Floyd Roses didn't exist yet. And he would no like, way. Why, he would lube the nut up so the strings would like bend and go back in place correctly. Yeah. And a so bunch of other, stuff. yeah, just a bunch of other stuff to like get it to like work over time. And uh, he, you know, pretty much was the guy that invented the super strat, which is like the strat with the humbucker that we all use now. Oh yeah, the best guitar. <laughs> and well, it, I mean, it wasn't even yeah. until recently where I heard the, this is something I've known for a long time where it's like, he had an old Marshall Plexi and he would crank it, but then mm -hmm. he would use a Variac, um, try like transformer. Like it would, it would lower the wattage. Like a power transformer? Yeah, it would lower the wattage, but you could crank it up so the tubes would break up the most, but you could lower the wattage. Okay. And I That's was like, sick. I was like, okay, yeah, no, that makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't until I watched another interview where the guy explained it better. He was like, yeah, that's what preamps do now. I'm like, he literally invented oh, preamps. Wow. Because those old amps don't have that. Yeah, it's just like a master input and output, and then, like, that's it. And then you just have to, like, dime the head and then, like, you know, somehow control the loudness of it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's 
Holy moly, that's crazy. Like, I didn't know that. Yeah, and like he's he's obviously the guy that made the 5150, um, which mm -hmm. accidentally invented thrash metal <laughs> and a bunch of other like genres. Um, just, yeah, so just so it's much cool stuff, thing. man. So like, and just besides the gear and his contribution, like everyone talks about his lead playing, but like his rhythm playing is just phenomenal. And I pretty much studied everything he had to offer, you know, before his passing awesome. in, uh, in 2020 and everything. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I mean. It sounds like you're a huge fan. That must have been um, uh, heartbreaking when he passed. Cause, yeah, like, I, I learned within from... minutes because his son posted, and I was. Oh, geez, yeah. It was a call because for me, Eddie has is is definitely more like an influence of my influences, mm -hmm. for me. Um, but you know, looking at all of my different influences, like being just like devastated and heartbroken, I was like, oh my god, like, yeah, and and like just just to, all the things that you just said, like how forward thinking he was and not only like technique and like playing and stuff but oh yeah. even with gear and floyd roses and and preamps and like just all the things that it's just like oh like i just don't even think about today it's, oh this is normal in the guitar world and it was good just to just to to look back at how like how much of a pioneer he was when it came to like rock and metal and stuff yeah it, it super resonated like it's it's still resonating today <laughs> You know, it's, it's yeah, I don't think it'll ever not resonate because it was such a uh, influence on everything. Um, yeah, such a revolutionary thing. Besides that, though, I, my other guitar players of uh, interest include like uh, Andy Summers from The Police. I like him a lot. Yeah, super cool. Sick. And um, I like Alex Lifeson from Rush. I like Jeff Beck a ton. Yeah. Very, very older influences, obviously, June, you know? Yeah. And everything That's interesting. In That's cool. What's, I think. Um... He, um, I think the police guy played on the Amazing Spider-Man 2 soundtrack. It might. He might have. There's, I know some famous guitar player played on that. Might have not been worth bringing up actually during this interview. <laughs> no, like, no, you're all good. Bro. You're good. <laughs> like not, not got the right person, but, um, but yeah, dude, that's super cool. Like it's just kind of like, for me, it's kind of interesting to hear that. Like you kind of have some like kind of more old school influences, um, for your playing and stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm super duper old head when it comes to that kind of thing. I I think the in my opinion, I think the last person to truly push the instrument. I'm not saying the last great player, but the last person to push the instrument in a different direction completely was probably Tom Morello. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. Just really from like, just oh, play. he's not even like he's doing effects with, without the guitar even plugged in, like just tapping the jack, like the noise yeah, feedback yeah. and stuff. But ever since that, um, I'm like, I haven't seen a guitar player like you see like especially now like the math rock peeps and everything and like it's it's extremely cool like don't get me wrong but like it's not yeah it's not pushing the instrument into a completely different direction because like it's it's derivative of like what eddie was doing and what all those jazz players were doing back in like the 70s you know with the the finger tapping and stuff like that mm -hmm. of, of what are you know just building upon what already existed before yeah not pushing in a completely different direction but like i hate to say everything's done been done with the guitar but it kind of feels like it <laughs> i mean it's i mean it's very expressive yeah. you know there's, there's 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 a lot there's more you can do with a guitar than like i don't know like a piano or something but oh absolutely yeah um but yeah in that regard yeah i feel you on that and also correction it was uh johnny marr of the smiths not uh, of the smiths okay yeah yeah, yeah yeah he was the one that contributed to that soundtrack because i like i don't know weird movie soundtracks i guess i don't know um but yeah man that's awesome okay what are your influences um dang you had such cool influences mine are like a no bro influence. no bro i'm just old school <laughs> um what's it called um well i grew up um as a as a pop punk kid mm -hmm. um what's it called so before i got into music or guitar or whatever um i would draw a bunch yeah um and i kind of thought like i was gonna go down the path of i don't know like comic book artist or i don't know what i loved spider-man and marvel and stuff and so i mm -hmm. thought that's really thought that was the path i was headed towards and then i heard um it was uh it was ocean avenue by yellow card I'm not sure if you're yeah i see I, I see that you're a huge yellow card fan okay yeah that's and it's just like and it's just bizarre because then like you look at like i don't know my covers or like if my solo music and i tell people yep that's my favorite band and people are like how <laughs> like that makes <laughs> no sense it just it, but it, they just are um and so i heard that song um 
And I just, I just, it's one of those like rare moments where it's just like, yep, I remember where I was, who I was with, and I heard like the mm -hmm. riff or whatever. And I'm like, I don't know what it was, but I was just like, oh my God, I love this. And I need to like learn how to play the guitar right now. And so that's what like kickstarted like that journey or whatever. And mm -hmm. then I, and then, you know, na it naturally progressed into, you know, a bunch of the other pop punk stuff or whatever, or at least what we call pop punk now. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it was like your green days and. I was really into Sum 41 and like... Oh, absolutely right. Um, I'm blanking on a bunch of stuff, but that's where... Um, that's what kind of kicked off the guitar for me. Um, and then like it slowly delved into like... Um, you know, I was hugely influenced by like the scene and my and my peers at school and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so it got into um, um, kind of like um, metal stuff, I guess. Kind of no, like kinda the, hard. uh, we called it Screamo back in high school. Correct. <laughs> like yeah. Post-hardcore or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And it's just, it's just hard to like throw out like, yeah, like I got into metal music because everybody's definition of metal is like, I don't know. I, 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 I love metal because I feel like it can be anything. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like, you know, this kind of progressive thing where, and that's why I think I fell in love with it or whatever, but some of my, um, how would you call it? Um, like gateway drug metal bands or whatever, I mm -hmm. guess. Was it where like your Avenged Sevenfolds and Bullet from My Valentine? Oh, and, absolutely, like, man. Like um, so that's what kickstarted like, like kind of the metal part. And then I started getting into like you know, um, like the metalcore stuff, Devil Wears Prada. Mm -hmm. And then I got into like I don't know, like Suicide Silence and like kind of like way heavier bands and like uh, uh, uh. uh the Black Dahlia murder, um, and, and just like a bunch, like just just a ton of, you know, I was just like my my palette in that arena was just was just expanding and expanding and expanding um, over the course of high school and stuff, um, and so um, and then it eventually led into like kind of what's like you know like you were mentioning like the math rock and stuff that's like mm -hmm. uh, popular of today. Um, I'm a huge huge periphery guy. Yeah, um, periphery fucking periphery. rocks, dude. I love periphery. Um, I'm also a huge Animals as Leaders guy mm -hmm. and like that whole progressive scene like I, I'm I'm very much into it um, right now these days um, and so that's what's kind of dri driving you know me to kind of get inspired into you know um, you know still trying to get be better as a, as a guitar player you know mm -hmm. be better as a musician be better as a songwriter to kind of like look at these different influences and, and kind of try to you know develop like you know a sound that's going to work for me or whatever mm -hmm. um and that's just on the uh you know on the uh on like i guess we'll call it the normal side of music right um because then on, on like on the other on, on another path you know adjacent to that or whatever was all the all the video game stuff all the sonic stuff right mm -hmm. um because yeah like like you like like many we all played sonic adventure 2 and we're hitting the face with um with city escape and i was like oh my god this is like it's like real music in a game. Yeah, know? I know it's, it's like, real, dude. It's not just like some some stuff, you know. Yeah, it's not just like some synthesized like you know. Because I, I grew up uh, a Nintendo kid. Um, yeah, same here. Yeah, I, I didn't get into Sonic until a little later. Um, but once once I played that game, and that was my gateway drug into Sonic was Sonic Adventure Two. Um, but like, oh my god, this sounds like Yellow Card. This sounds like those bands. Like this sounds like what? This is awesome. And then like Live and Learn, and then everything, and it was like, oh my god. And so I got really into like. Um, you know, like stuff that's catchy, I guess, is what I put it. Yeah, what catchy's really the big thing, man. That. Like, if I write something, it has to, like, if you can't hum it, it's shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, like, and so I, it gets in, in my brain, I'm trying to kind of, like, meld the two into to where I can kind of scratch both itches at some point or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's always going to be, like, I don't know. And then next year, I'm not into that at all. And I'm into, like, a new thing. Like, it's always changing for me. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, I like that. Like, I don't want to be, um, you know, tied down to like a specific genre or a gall in on, in the one thing because I still very much, um, I'm still, I still very much like a lot of the, the that old pop punk stuff. Um, but I don't know, dude. I'm into everything. Like, I love pop music. I, I just, I, I like everything. I don't know. Yeah. Before I got into um, into classic rock and stuff like that, uh, I actually exclusively listened to. Um, to pop really yeah i grew up with um like all, all just anything pop between like 
97 when I was actually being consciously more aware of music, you know, to mm -hmm. uh, like 2005 or whatever. You know, I was like, pop music all the way, pop station on, keep it on. Yeah. And I remember hearing, literally hearing Hey Ya by Outkast mm -hmm. and oh, being yeah, like, classic. this is the greatest hook and song. It's the best thing in pop ever. And I was like, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. It doesn't get better than this. So yeah, I started listening more to the classic rock station and everything, right? And um, yeah. And my mom and I used to play this game where she would say, who plays that? If you can name the song and who plays it, right? Okay. And as years go on, I'm better at it than she is. You know, no so, way. so it's a good way for me not only to recognize the music, but the people behind it. So my palette could get a little bit more like specific, you know? Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Um, what's it called? Uh, yeah, like, I don't know. For me, like, a good... There's nothing like... There's nothing like a great pop song, right? Because, like, my bad habit is that I'll overwrite, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why my solo project is, like, a you know, that progressive metal instrumental thing. Um, because it's like, okay, it can be whatever. It can be nine minutes long. Like, that's cool. Um, but when, you, when it's... When it comes down to like okay let's condense it and use the best parts of what we have and turn it into something that's um digestible and yeah you know people can vibe with or whatever that's really tough at least it's really tough for me because it's like um you know there's formulas and chord progressions or whatever that you can you know use to better attune to your um to get the the finished product uh to be something that people will enjoy but like i don't know man when it's when it's just like when a song is just it's just the perfect length and it's the perfect notes and it's the perfect voice and it's the perfect like i don't know man but to me that's just like something i still aspire to like capture one day you know yeah it's really tough because when we all start out like i remember the average length of all my songs when i started writing like writing original stuff was like seven minutes long like every yeah, time exactly. seven six minutes yep. long and like i thought i was doing a pop progression of like you know intro verse chorus or pre-chorus you know and then and bridge mm -hmm. and you finish it up and everything but um even when i started doing being more consciously aware of that it was still like five minutes long you know so as yeah. time went on i started to like have this mentality of like rewarding the listener in a sense that like if i do something here then going into the second verse or going into this part it should change a little bit you know because if, yeah. especially nowadays like if you're listening a minute and a half into anything I'm going to reward you because <laughs> I'm just glad you're here. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. That's inter That's actually a re really great tip because mm -hmm. um, you know, I've heard that before where it's like, you know, if a section is going to repeat, you know, add something new, change up the kick pattern or add a, a ride or I don't know, whatever. Yeah, just just um, do anything to like recognize it, right? Like one, one of my tricks that I do like almost every time is that mm -hmm. when I go into the... Uh, I'll play like the chorus, you know, and then the bridge happens. And when the chorus comes back, I'll actually half time it. Oh, that's cool. So the, yeah, there's like I a like little that. breakdown and then I'll like go back into the, uh, the four, four rhythm. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Like the, there's so many great tricks. I'm like trying to keep, keeping the listener engaged, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. because you know, you could follow the template intro verse, you know, chorus or whatever. Um, but it, it really is those, like those small things like, uh, okay, this field that goes into, this part or what am i going to do to change the second half of this verse to keep it interesting or mm -hmm. or whatever like it's really those things that are that like the, it's it almost seems like small but like i feel like I end up making probably the most difference in the long run do you know any um do you know music by uh notation like do you know music can you read it <laughs> uh okay um i'm just gonna say no but um i did take um three years of guitar in high school mm -hmm. um and that's where i learned you know how to play uh finger style mm -hmm. and uh you know read sheet music and i got into you know sight reading a little bit and you know i did do like kind of like um i guess competitions you would call them you know mm -hmm. you just go to other, different schools and perform or whatever and you know I, I did pretty decent i wasn't like great or anything but there was a point in time where i was i guess somewhat proficient in that mm-hmm um, and uh, I think it's just kind of like, it's just that, uh, I, I live on intuition now. <laughs> yeah, same here, bro. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's like, I, I, I really want to take the time someday to really just sit down and, 
and and really because i feel like um I, i'm 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 limiting myself by not um learning it right because i you know mm -hmm. i've heard some people like um like periphery right like they're they're really big on how um they don't know theory right they say that all the time how they're mm -hmm. like oh we don't know any theory um and they use you know they use their ears to to write their music and figure out their chords or whatever and that's really cool and that's you know super influ influential for me or whatever um but at the same time i think there is a lot to say about like you know being musically proficient in in, in knowing theory and knowing okay this is a scale that can work with these chords or, or whatever mm. um and i really want to take the time to do that to, to just like to just be to just be a better um songwriter you know just to know like just to expand like the the my musician's palette you know just to just so i don't keep playing like i don't know pentatonic scale all the time <laughs> or it's whatever hard, it's hard know? not to man like for me it's the blue scale like every time yeah yeah it's just hard because it's you know it's a box that you're used to and it's hard to to break free and to to learn a new thing like i've been trying to get my head into um economy picking lately mm -hmm. um which is something that i've always wanted to try to like be good at um and i just don't take the time to just like okay you're gonna practice today and that's all you're gonna do you know it's just I just yeah, need to like, set a time, like a regimen or a routine or something to really it, like... It's so hard to... Like, I, we, we've all had that moment, we all have the story playing guitar, we're like, yeah, we were all at the foot of our bed for three hours, you know, until mm -hmm. our finger, until the calluses on our fingers started forming, you know, practicing yeah. that scale, man, practicing that scale. You get older, man, like, you know, there are times where I'm like, okay, I don't pick up guitar unless it's time to record. <laughs> It's kind yeah, of been me for the last just, few years. It's just hard. Um, it's just really hard to find the time, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, you know, I, I still, I, I'm very much working a full time job, to, you know, to, to, to live, yeah. you know, and so, you know, and to buy gear and like all these things. You know, I love doing YouTube and and, and music and everything, but you know, it's not enough to, um, you know, to self fund uh, everything at this point in time. You know, I, I, I would hope that I can get to that point someday but like yeah like we, and we have our lives outside of our creativeness and stuff and it's just hard to you know to incorporate it in a way where it's where it's going to be um at least for me where it's going to be healthy um and i'm not you know staying up at like crazy hours at night to um you know to to to, to record a part or learn mm -hmm. guitar or whatever you know it's just it's tricky but you know i don't know i i'm still hopeful that i'll find you know some some sort of schedule or something that's going to work. Yeah, I think finding the schedule is is extremely difficult because for me it was like, you know, this is this is pretty much what I do for a living. I'm not saying I make enough for a living, but my current situation, <laughs> I'm fine. And I used to uh, like do whatever during the day, and at night I would stay up to like four a.m. just writing. You know, that's awesome. And, and yeah. I would I would sleep till like noon or something or one o'clock, get yeah. up for a little bit and then do it again. And now it's like, eh, you know, at night, you know, you know, I got, I got engagements with people and, and friends and, and just wanting to, uh, relax at night, you know? So I try to like get up earlier during the day mm -hmm. and get that done at a uh, decent hour instead of like doing it all night. I, I miss, I miss working all night, but I just don't have the same mindset like I used to. Yeah. I, I was very much the same way too. Like, mm -hmm. I think, I, I don't know. I, uh, I have yet to meet a musician that was that is naturally uh, like a, you know, early bird gets the worm kind of person, you know, because I think it's just, I don't know, intuition where it's just like, I think what it is, I don't know, it's just like kind of when you have like the serenity, like the quietness around you to like be 100% into a project or whatever, is I think what sparks like a lot of that creativity. Oh, absolutely. It's and, like just quiet and like you have nothing expected for the rest of the day. It's nighttime. Like the only thing you have mm -hmm. to look forward to is bedtime. Yeah, exactly. And so like that's for me. Yeah, it was like uh, that was the, the time to like to do things or whatever. Um, and uh, that's how I got a, like a lot of these videos done back in the day, you know, mm -hmm. Um but, uh, you know, not to go off on a tangent or anything, but, like, I've been um, very, very, very big on my uh, my MO on this uh, mental health journey I've been mm. on, you know, to kind of course correct and, like, yeah, that, that it was great back in the day that I would do, like, literally whatever it took to get a video done and spend so many hours and whatever. But it was, it was a, it, for me, personally, it ended up being a very kind of unhealthy lifestyle you know um where oh, i was yeah, devoting no all this time to you know to get a, a 
I don't know, fucking Zelda video done or whatever, you know, to where yeah. I'm, not, I'm not getting sleep. I'm not, you know, feeding myself with the right nutrition. Um, I'm bailing on like plans and hanging out with like real people and or whatever, because in my mindset, it was like, I got to do whatever it takes to make it work or whatever. And like, I feel that's that's that can be good um, to an extent. You in know? controlled spurts. Yeah. In controlled spurts. Yeah. So <clears throat> I've been, you know, still trying to figure out, you know, um, what the pattern is for me and what's going to work um because it you know it changes all the time life changes and whatever um but you know but what's what i think what the payoff is at least for me that i've noticed is that because i'm allowing myself to do things like sleep and like you know um see the sun and talk to people and whatever like when it comes time to like okay i have an hour today to be creative or whatever right mm -hmm. um my brain is rested and is ready and, it, and is ready and excited to like to jump into a project and yeah. stuff. And so I've been kind of reaping like those sorts of benefits that I like I really wouldn't before, you know. So like I, I, I don't know where I'm going with this, but um, but uh, but yeah, I don't know. Mental health gang. That's kind of where I'm at right now in life. You know, yeah, it's really important because um, there was a time where, you know, I'd be making a bunch of stuff. And this is before I like the YouTube came into the picture. And, uh, you know, going into 2019, I, I didn't have, I was like, I gotta get my life together, man. Like, you know, I'm doing music and everything. I want to do music for a living, but I haven't made yeah. the call. And, uh, I started doing, um, I had somebody contact me for work and they wanted me to do an original track for them. And I was like, okay, cool. And it was for the, uh, the overseas idol community, which is a group of people who, uh, emulate the Japanese idol culture of like performances and the, the culture surrounding that and everything, which was like... Hey, I couldn't didn't see didn't see my life doing this, but uh, they're paying me. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, cool. okay, this yeah. is cool, and I'm like, hey, it's still it's not exactly out of my vein because a lot of my favorite like music and musicians come from Japan. So I'm like, it's not like I'm not acquainted to it already. So I did that for yeah. a long time, and I'd grind stuff out. I, I used to get stuff done in like a week, you know, full tracks down to mix and everything. Yeah, that's and, amazing. Uh, yeah, and I did that for. I would say about two years or so. Um, I think the straw that broke the camel's back is that I did the soundtrack for a game called Tori 3D, and I it already had a sound. That? Yeah, I did. Yeah, the Tori 3D one. Yeah, the first one. The first one. I did the first one. Yo, I love that game. No way. Yeah, it's the um, the alternative soundtrack because it has two soundtracks. It's there's a royalty free one on there, okay. but it was starting to get like copyright strikes. For some reason, even though it's supposed to be royalty oh. free, so my friend, uh, oh, yeah. my friend Marcus, okay. who I've known for a, a long time, like I've known for a long time, he said, "Hey, I know you said like you do music for my one, my next project. Can you do music for this one because it's like getting struck down off? You know, it's 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 fucking up the viewership. Yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had like a son. It was literally like a Sonic CD situation where." You have like the original soundtrack that had plenty of time to be made, you know, mm -hmm. in, in place of the royalty free. And then for Sonic CD, they had seven weeks to get a whole new soundtrack out besides like the past stuff. Cause that was like on the uh, FM synthesis, like Yamaha chip. So they couldn't mm -hmm. change that. It'd be a lot harder to change it. So yeah, I had two weeks <laughs> to oh do my God, I think nine tracks in total, two weeks. Wow. And I did it. And I was pulling my fucking hair out. When I look back at that soundtrack, I'm like, shit, I could've done, I could've done it so much better, man. Could've done it so much but better. But I mean, to you for getting it done. But yeah, no, I feel that. Like, it's just like not, you know, I mean, there's so many stories of that where it's just like, oh man, I couldn't get, like the, like e how E.T. was made. Like, like I did it like in a week or something, or I don't, yeah, I don't know shit. how long it took or, it took or whatever, but like, but wow, yeah, dude. Well, t tell me about that. I had no idea that. Oh, oh my God. I, I And I apologize for like not knowing that. I had oh, it no, that's good, like, bro. That's good. That's amazing. So after that, did, did you kind of put a pause on um, composing for, for games or? I, I um... think for there, I went into um, my first Sonic album for Spotify, which was the Sonic 30th anniversary mega, mega collection album with like Sonic Boom and like yeah, all this stuff on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I finished that pretty, within like a few months, pretty, pretty fast turnaround on that. And then after that, I was like, cool, I, I can have a break. And yeah. I, like, there was just one day, man, I just sat down. And I was like, my heart feels weird, dude. My heart feels weird. What's going on? 
Oh. And I started having, I felt like I was having like heart palpitations or like pains in my chest and stuff and everything. And I went to like a doctor and they said, nothing's wrong with you, man. Nothing's wrong with you. It just kept on happening. I'm like, look, there's something wrong, man. There's something wrong. And so they did another test, sent me to the hospital to do like more extensive testing. Mm-hmm. And by the end of it, they said like, it was cool. It was a much younger guy. So like he, I, I trust a younger doctor than like a newer one. He came in and said bro. like, he said like, yeah, bro, like you're good. Mm-hmm. Like as, as far as like physically, there's nothing wrong with you. And that's all I needed to hear because I was like, oh shit, I, I've developed anxiety. <laughs> yeah. Like it hit me hard because yes. I, I used to be like, you know, I, I had very, you know, severe bouts of depression in the past and everything before, but like I kind of was teeter tottering on like, well, yeah, you know, you know, mental health stuff, like, you know, just chill out and don't overexert yourself. But that was like my first encounter with like, oh, this can affect you in like weird and, and interesting ways. <laughs> Like physically, yeah, yeah. you no, can do like pseudo physical stuff to you, and I was like, oh shit! Like I gotta, I gotta lean back a bit and like reapproach this. You gotta hit the brakes on it. Yeah. I mean, I totally relate to that so much. Yeah, because yeah, I lived, I lived my life a, a, like just a, like I was saying before, where it was just you would stay up all night to get something done, and then go mm. to work, and then you know I was really big on going to the gym at the time and like doing that and just trying to figure out you know just doing anything and everything, right? Yeah, just um, like grind set. Yeah, just on the, on the we're Sigmas, bro. <laughs> you know, like yeah, we're that. Sigmas, bro. We gotta run yeah. that grind set, man. Um, and like you know, and, and then like there were moments where like I look back now and I'm like, I really should have taken like those signs like a lot more seriously. You know, like you know, there were a couple of like I think it was the first show I did like as myself as the, mm-hmm. like a solo guy, and I had the night before I had like this crazy panic attack. Where, you know, I was just kind of like on the ground, like trying to compose myself and like you know, hyperventilating a little bit. I'm like, mm. like, oh my God, this is crazy. And I got it together. Yeah, I did the show. And once I, once I was playing, I felt better. Um, but, you know, I didn't, I didn't really think much of it. And then I had another one, another time and whatever. And so, um, you know, um, for me recently, like, you, you know, and I, and, I, and, and I promised everyone that we're going to get back to like, fun stuff yeah like, oh. stuff. yeah no but you know, this, this but is important like, to talk about because i don't think a lot of creators talk about this yes and like in this and and in in and, and it's 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 a new it's like a new thing for me um because i just it's just i just wasn't aware right yeah you're so you're so in it that you're like oh nothing's wrong with me or whatever like i'm fine or whatever like i live like this all the time or whatever mm-hmm. um and everything without getting into like too much details or whatever but like um, back in 22, like towards the end of 22, basically, with, again, without, you know, not trying to get too personal or anything, mm-hmm. but like something had escalated to a point where, um, I, uh, out of frustration, I ended up punching a wall. Yeah. Um, you know, and I looked at like my hand or whatever, and it was like on the pinky side. Mm-hmm. Um, and you could see that it was like caved in or whatever. Um, and for me, that was like the, the light bulb moment that like, okay, like something needs to change, you know, like there were a lot of, um, like external factors that kind of led to me like doing that, you know, there was like, you know, I was in kind of a relationship that wasn't really working and like, mm-hmm. you know, um, but also on top of that, just kind of like the, how I was carrying myself, like unhealthily trying to like, just trying to be like a, like Superman, just trying to be able to, just trying to do everything. I need to take care of this person. I need to take care of this. I need to do whatever and really never taking the time to like hey you need to chill out too like you need to take care of yourself and you know and understand that as well and so Mm -hmm. that was a that was a big moment for me and and, you know there were a lot of factors too i ended up i had i had moved to a different place and it had to move back because of everything or whatever Mm -hmm. and it was just kind of it's just a big mess of everything and so um for the last ever since then i just been kind of on this um like a journey of like kind of recovery, you know, like in, in, in all the different ways, um, of, of that, of that definition of recovery, you know, like Mm -hmm. there's physical therapy and getting like my hand back and I had to get surgery and they put in like a screw and everything and like all of that stuff. And then there was like the mental recovery of everything, you know, like learning how to take care of myself and learning like, Hey, it's bedtime and Hey, you're done with this project. And 
you know, picking up books and reading about my brain and learning about, you know, how to deal with like anxiety or, or how to deal with OCD or how to deal with like, you know, just like things that I just wasn't even aware that like, you know, I had issues with, you know? Um, so I, I guess to, to, to kind of tie it back into like the, the music thing, like so much of like, I don't know, like our modern culture or whatever, like so much of it is that Sigma grind set, like, yeah, let's like not get any sleep and let's get it done or whatever. But I, I, I just, I, 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 I haven't gone through like, I guess my mental breakdown or whatever. It's just like, I, I, I plead that, um, that like other creators and younger creators and artists and stuff, like really take the time to, to take care of myself because to take care of themselves, because, you know, it's just, things like youtube and instagram and, and and whatever else like it's just so demanding now for like it's to, so to feed the algorithm or it's whatever, so incredibly know? demanding because like my my only regret is that i i'm glad i did like the original stuff first mm -hmm. but now that i'm doing like covers like i got at the very tail end of like when it was still good so i, I released something and it would get like a couple thousand views some songs would just pop the hell off for no reason I'm like cool yeah. cool but then like it seems like when especially when like the pandemic hit mm -hmm. and, like a few years into that everybody and their grandmothers is doing remixes you know yep and yep. it's like well I gotta, I gotta compete man I gotta compete and it's like here's the thing man like it's really easy to look at everybody around you and see like oh fuck man they're, they're doing so much better or like they got this stuff or whatever like no man you gotta go at your own pace yes absolutely absolutely yeah because everybody and anything and everybody can seem like like you know it's i don't know if it's instinctual or what but it's like oh it's competition like this these this oh their songs are better or they're getting more views or like oh i gotta mm -hmm. i gotta do better i gotta upload more often or whatever and like that stuff would really get to me uh and i'm sure it gets to you too because oh, absolutely just like, bro. you know um because you know you want to do your thing and be successful and, and turn it into something and like unfortunately that does equate into like trying to get the views or the or the streams or, or whatever mm -hmm. um and then so i guess you're, you're low-key you're just kind of trying to survive so like anyone else is like kind of in your wheelhouse i guess maybe instinctually like kind of seems like like competition or whatever and it's like yeah like, it, be, it, it becomes a little bit toxic you know just from mm -hmm. from the point of view and everything like a big reason that I wanted to like do what we're doing right now is mm -hmm. to um, there's like this mindset in fighting games, that, which I, I play a lot of fighting games and everything, where Sick. when you when you fight somebody online, they're a no good motherfucker NPC. They're slime. They're nothing. Mm -hmm. How yeah. dare you whoop my ass, dude? You're nothing, man. <laughs> yeah, here's the sure. thing. There, there are games now with like online chat. So like I play a lot of Street Fighter Six, and there's like a battle hub. Oh, sick. Okay. And you go in there and you can sit down. You can see somebody sit down at a cabinet and you'll play them, run the set and get up. And here's the thing about that, man. You have to literally look into that guy's eye. <laughs> you have to look into his oh, wow. eye and be like, GG. Wow. Cause like you, if you act like a bitch, that's in public. <laughs> Unless you send them like a private whisper, like everyone's seeing that you're being a bitch. So you have to like, uh, yeah. you know, be forthcoming on and everything. But like, I've, I've fought people who've, who've been like equal matches or I whip their butt or they whip mine. You go like, GG's mm -hmm. man. And it's like, yeah, I like the way you do this and everything. And it's like, oh man, yeah, it's great. And automatically all the nerves I had fighting them are gone because they're yeah, human. Yeah, and then it's cool. Yeah, because yeah. then it's just like, yeah. And then it's, and I think that's, that's cool too, that it's like a lot of that responsibility, I feel like does fall on us as individuals to mm -hmm. try to, you know, um, come at these things because like things like fighting games and like trying to get views or whatever like it is mm -hmm. you know you are trying to be better than the other person in some aspect but also to try to remember that like yeah it's still a person on the other side of that like it's still like a person just like it's you still a me. functioning human being putting mm -hmm. the, the same if not more effort you know and yeah, exactly. seeing it seeing it less as competition and more to be inspired you know exactly it's just like i'm uh i don't know if you've seen that meme and like i think about it all the time and then it, like if i'm ever feeling that way like i think about this meme and it just like resets my brain mm. but it's like it's um it's like a it's like a comic it's like two panels or something and it's mm -hmm. um it's like this dude who like who's bringing in bringing in a, a cake 
I don't know if you've seen that one. Where I think it's I've seen like, it. Okay. And essentially, he's putting a cake down on like a table next to an even bigger cake, right? Oh, I think I've heard it. Remind me, though. Keep going. Okay. So, and he looks over at the cake. He's like, oh, man, that, would, that cake's so much bigger and better than mine or whatever, right? Mm. And then he walks away. And then some random person walks up to the two cakes. And they say, oh, yay, two cakes. You know? Yeah, and exactly. It's, like, it's like, hey, I get, I get, hey, one's bigger, one's smaller. Like, hey, I'm... like this was this flavor, and that was that flavor, and like, oh, that's sick. And it's just like, yeah, that's how it should be as like creatives. It shouldn't be like, oh my god, they have more streams or more songs or whatever. It should be like, no, this is this should be an equal playing field where you know we can all feel like we can be creative and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, kind of kind of like how you were saying, like, um, like with with doing things like this or whatever. That's that's how I got into starting to stream myself mm. um in an effort to kind of have like an outlet that's comfortable for me and really only for me like mm -hmm. i mean I, it, I don't know if it really makes sense for me to, to stream games on my channel it's probably not it's probably tanking the algorithm in, in my corner of youtube or whatever and it's really not doing me any favors but like damned if i'm not having fun with it you know damned if i'm not just like I, but it's fun for me and it lets me it gives me an excuse to like play a game and like hang out with people and like i don't know it's just been like a fun thing that i've been enjoying and like that's really what it should be at the end of the day right like i don't know like it shouldn't you shouldn't put yourself into this box where things have to be a certain way or whatever um you know i mean with certain to a certain extent I, yeah. I mean, you have to like brand yourself in a way where it's gonna make sense and whatever you're trying to grow and maybe right now what I'm doing isn't really necessarily the best way to grow, but like, I don't know. My my brain feels a whole lot better about it these days. So like, I don't know. That's the kind. That's like the wave I'm riding like these days. Yeah, just just mixing it up in any in any format, you know. Because you, you probably know some my stuff if you've um, mm -hmm. seen like a decent amount of my stuff. Like yeah, I do like the rock stuff and everything and whatever, and bring the guitar. And there are times where I'm like, hey, I, I just want to write like a classical piece. I want to do more ambient. I want to do something else, you know? Yeah. And those videos don't Correct. tend to do super great compared to the the Sonic and rock stuff. You yeah. Know? But yeah. like, bro, I got to do what I got to do. I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll try to make it a video game remix so it can go on the channel. But like, I, I just got like, I'm not just a guitar player, man. I got to get some express myself more, you know? Yeah, exactly. Way. Like, exactly. Yeah. And I think, you know, we're similar because we're into like, um, obviously Sonic, mm -hmm. but like we're into video games and we're into guitar and we love uh, the nerdy aspects of music and like, what does it take to, to produce music and gear? And like, these are all different parts of me that I enjoy. And like, that's how I feel I can show that I'm creative or, or whatever, or have mm -hmm. a, my creative outlet. And it's like, I have to keep reminding myself, like, that's what it should be at the end of the day. And it, like you were saying, it, it does kind of suck that like, now that like post pandemic like yeah i've noticed the same thing that you have that like i'm i could be making the same sorts of videos or covers and really feel like in my head like oh i think the composition on this is better and mm -hmm. the mix is better and everything i'm doing is better you know i'm i'm lighting it better i'm shooting it better or whatever um and it's just like not like the videos aren't doing as well as they used to and like you know, in my case, I don't know if it's because like I kind of took, took like a hiatus on it or whatever, or I never found a way to consistently upload or, or whatever the reason is. But like, yeah, I don't know. And it is a little like um, discouraging, you know? Yeah, um, man, it's it's extremely, extremely discouraging. Like I, yeah. I had a um, situation about a couple months ago or whatever, where like, you know, I'd be working with the clients and they're like, like, oh, you know, this isn't what I want or whatever. And it's like, man, like. Like, I know I'm good at this shit. Like, why? Everyone's getting down on me and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and then the just, views yeah, don't match it's up. Hard. And it's it's hard to feel mm -hmm. like... There's always a moment, and maybe you feel this too, where besides all the doubt, when you start working on something, you get excited about it. And then, like, mm -hmm. it goes away for a bit. And then you release it. And then what happens, happens. And then the cycle repeats. Yeah. Oh, that happens to me all the time, yeah. dude. Like... Like I was like this year, like I've been working working on a stupid mission street cover like forever, mm -hmm. right? And like I was feeling so good about it, like in January, like yeah, dog, we're gonna do the new year and let's do it. And then like I just stopped working on it, and I'm just like, and but but I'm trying to take it. What I would do in the past is just like brute force my way through it. 
Um, and like now I'm taking a, a completely different approach. I'm like, well, this isn't inspiring me anymore right now. Mm -hmm. Um, so like maybe just put it on the back burner. Like there's no, there's nobody like, you know, what's it called? Yuji Naka is not like pointing the gun at my head. And it's like, you have to release this or whatever. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Like, nobody is telling me, like, I have to do this other than myself, you know? Yeah, um, he's, he's definitely not telling anybody anything anymore. <laughs> yeah, for sure, <laughs> behind bars. <laughs> Someone's telling him what to do now. Yeah, real talk. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my oh God. My God. Oh. But, uh, but, you know, so I'm just trying to be like, well, okay, this, is, this isn't, you know, uh, satisfying me, like, creatively anymore. So mm -hmm. let me just put a pause on this and, like, all right, what, what else can I do to, that's, like, kind of, like, fun for me or whatever? Then, you know, I was thinking about gear and then, like, oh, you know, I haven't done, like, a gear thing or whatever. Let me do that or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know. Like, I, that's just the path I've been on because since, like, since the views aren't, like, what they used to be, I guess, I don't know. I'm just kind of on this in this, like, like, kind of fuck it mentality, you know? Like, I'm just, like, whatever, man. Like, this makes me happy and I'm going to work on this as long as it takes. If it doesn't get released by Friday or whatever mental release date I set on it, like then it's like, whatever. It gets done when it gets done, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the path that I've been on. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's a good call, man. And that, that's kind of where I've been with myself as well. Where like the the last few videos I've released, like the last video I released on the channel was an original. You know, I'm like, oh shit, yeah. I got to got to do an original again. Like, oh, it's yeah. fucking cool. I'm really proud of it. And like, it didn't, you know, obviously it didn't pop off, and it hurts when the original doesn't pop off. But, mm -hmm. um hella proud of it you know Super yeah proud and of I mean, it that's, that's what it i mean that's what it should be too i did um you know um like a, a super mario medley um like when the movie came out um and, and i you know it was like kind of the first thing i did post you know surgery and mm -hmm. getting back into guitar and everything and kind of like getting back into the groove of things and i you know i worked really hard on it and took a long time with the transitions and the composition and whatever and i walked away like very proud of how it turned out yeah. um and it just like you know it didn't pop off and it's just like well you know it is what it is you know i i, I feel like i need to, to be able to grow from that and just be like but but can i look at this and still enjoy it right yeah uh, because like my my most popular video is a is the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog medley that I think is playing right now. Yeah, it's actually, actually playing yeah. right now, man. <laughs> yeah, um, that I, uh, you know, when I did that, I had like 400 subscribers, and I was lucky to get like 100 views on like that video. Um, but I didn't care, like genuinely. Like I look back on who, like what, like what was going through my brain mm. back then. I was just like, I don't care. I want to do like this really cool like kind of tribute to sonic um in the best way that i can and like you know i mean yeah i'm very proud of this video and yeah i can look back on it and be like yeah there's certain things that i you know i wish i could have done better or mm -hmm. i wish i would have gotten like a real vocalist because like that's i'm not like a singer but you know it's just like well you know we need we have to have vocals for these songs or whatever so i'm just I'll, whatever i'll just do it myself um but like my mindset would, was always you know i don't care i want to just make this for me and it took me like three months to do that video um, yeah it seems like it took a long fucking time man it took me forever and ever and ever um you know and eventually like i mean that's what's always worked for me like for me like the views don't happen right away mm -hmm. but it like i don't know like it gets discovered or i don't know like it eventually gets there i guess i don't know for me but. yeah my, i've got a few things um i was this, this like virtual on remix uh, into the blue sky and everything and it was it was doing mm -hmm. okay and over time and like i got over like like a thousand views and i was like oh wow it was like a 300 last time i checked you know like yeah. this stuff sits for a bit and it, it grows you know there's really yeah. anything that doesn't grow after like at least a year you know yeah exactly and i think like i don't know i try to remember that like i think i don't know from what i've seen it's just like quality will always outweigh quantity and i know we live in an age where like like youtube wants you to upload all the time and all these things or whatever but it's just like i mean I, for me i like i think it just it happens in the real world too right because i'm not sure if you're like an mcu or a marvel guy at all um, I, I like i like some some spider-man some x-men okay for sure like yeah. i'm i'm a huge spider-man guy i'm a very opinionated spider-man guy but, give me give me your um, uh biggest spider-man hot take right now 
Oh god, I hate Tom Holland. This is, that's it. I no, like I'm just kidding. kidding. I don't like everyone. <laughs> like he's fine. He's fine. He's just he's he's too young for me. Sorry, I'm used to a uh, I'm used to a Tobey Maguire that Dude, is I'm, who's I'm like 25, saying. but he's acting like he's 16. Like sorry, I like but that more. I'm sorry. Well, but it's just like okay for me. Like okay, I'm not gonna get into it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me, it's just like okay, yeah. It's it is it weird or whatever and campy. But yeah, but like the world that Sam Raimi built, like it just works with the campiness and like. Yeah, it's not great. There's probably more ac better accurate representations of Spider-Man or whatever, but like, whatever. Um, but like, you know, okay, so you know it enough to like, you know, like Endgame and all, all oh, of Oh, yeah, bro. I was, I was on that train like with everybody else. With Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 and I was too, you know, and I'm not trying to paint a picture where like I'm this fanboy, like where I, like, yeah, some of the movies aren't very good. And it's just like, that's just a fact. And I'm yeah. not going to like defend it. But, you know, at the time, it's like Marvel like took their time to build the the cinematic universe you know yeah. to, to flesh out their characters and like yep this is this and this is that so you know by the point they did get to end game it was the biggest movie in the world or whatever and it's like you know whether whether you like all the movies or not you know but um i felt like it was deservedly so you know because they really did take their time to like to to build to a point where we're gonna satisfy the audience and like do the thing or whatever right yeah, because so we we were on like the journey with them, you know. Because exactly. Iron Man came out, and we were like, "This fucking rocks, dude! What the hell, yeah. Robert Downey? Cool. Never heard of this guy, dude." Yeah, and we uh, ran with it. And by the time Endgame came around, the funniest thing about Endgame, I wonder if you had a similar situation. It was like real life Endgame in person because people I haven't seen in years showed up to watch <laughs> it with us. <laughs> yeah, it just it was just so cool that like, um what's it called uh that it, it was just it was just cool because like marvel was kind of, it was like i don't know i kind of look at it like sports i'm not a sports guy mm -hmm. but like sports has this weird kind of uh i don't know i don't know if r is the right word but it has this thing where it like it, like this mojo where it like unifies people or whatever you yeah know? it does you, all, all you have to do like if you're watching anything sports explain like each side if it's a individual or a team and be like this is this team or this person, this is their story. Tell the stories a bit and they'll pick one person or one team and that's all they need to get excited. Yeah, and it's just and it's just cool. Like, you know, my, my parents are big baseball guys and I've gotten mm -hmm. the games with them and like just to see the like the, the unification and people into it, like, a, a, you know, it really is like a beautiful thing even though like I'm really not a sports guy like yeah. at all. Um, what's it called? Like that's kind of what like Endgame was mm -hmm. for like the world, you know, like people who aren't into superheroes were coming to see Marvel movies. Exactly. Stuff. So like, um, cause you know, and I think it paid off because like, um, also I see uh winter synth in the, in the chat. Hello. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Yeah. What's popping? Um, uh, what's it called? Um, and now like post Endgame stuff, like it, it has just been this, um, this train of like, okay now we're doing a show for disney plus and like here's this movie and here's that movie and like it was it, it turned into like let's just pump out as much bullshit as we can and it really really diluted the brand you know completely diluted uh, it and it was it's it's weird to say man because we we thought up to that point that like oh man here's another marvel movie you know and then like whatever movie would come out maybe skip mm -hmm. one or like get the pad you know the pet the patch notes like the the spark notes on it or whatever spark notes version of it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and be like so just so i'm caught up with the story but like after endgame it's like okay this movie this movie all these fucking shows the quality sucks ass all these things like it's it's so weirdly not in line with what it was before because they're just correct. pumping out so much shit correct and like what's it called um you know, and I th and, and for me, like I can I can look at that as like a real world like, real world example. And, and this isn't like a knock at Marvel. Like if you if you love everything Marvel and you love everything they've done, like that's that's super cool. Like mm. like you can have that. I'm not trying to take that away. Oh, from no, you. if you like something, like just because someone yeah, doesn't like, like it, like don't let anyone take that away from you. <laughs> like if you thought Secret Invasion was good, then like that's awesome. I don't want to be your friend. But like. <laughs> <that's> cool. <laughs> but, like um i can look at that and like oh that's a real world example of like a company trying to do everything and like just totally like like fumbled it and like now it's just now like marvel's like a joke you know yeah even the um, like quote unquote like normies or anything are starting to see like hey this sucks <laughs> and when the when the common populace thinks it sucks that's bad that's really bad, bad dude <laughs> 
bad you know it's something like um you know i was never like a huge guardians of the galaxy guy like mm. but that's a very popular franchise yeah and guardians of the galaxy 3 should have crossed a billion easy i feel like and oh yeah no i i remember um going with my mom to see that for mother's day because she always wants to like yeah. watch a movie and i was i was choking up dude i was just like wow emotional content my marvel movie like this yeah. is great it was really good um and it stood out from like everything around it because it really everything did. was like like i don't know i think ant-man was like before that yeah like i didn't i didn't see that <laughs> okay oh my god it, like quantum mania was oh god it's yeah again i i want to keep this uh well we can talk about whatever but like I, I, I guess the point i'm trying to make is like yeah like for me like putting my all into a project and walking away proud of it like I can always come back to it and be like, yes, like I did everything I could at the time with the yeah. resources that I had, with the skills that I had, the knowledge I had and walk away and be happy with it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I never, you know, I never, um, because there were, there were a lot of times where like, there are videos where I look back and I'm like, I know I rushed this. I know I rushed this. And mm -hmm. I look back and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so disappointed in this. I'm disappointed with the mix. I'm disappointed with my tones. I'm disappointed with like, you know and then i'm just like not stoked on it anymore you know mm. and so because i'm trying to because i was trying to appease like an algorithm or whatever but like yeah robot I don't dude <laughs> yeah it, exactly and like that in 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 line with also like what, what i was saying before about like living really unhealth unhealthily and not sleeping and like i don't know like i was just like i would i would say out loud genuine in the feel genuine about like I would be like, man, I I wish I could just clone myself. I would say, right? Mm -hmm. I wish there was just two of me, where this guy can handle this, and the other guy can handle that, and we, I could get so much more done if I didn't have to sleep. Just and like, now that I've kind of woken up and that, I'm like, man, this was some fucking outlandish shit, like things that I was saying, you know? Like it's just like, cause that's just not great behavior, you know? You're, like, you're trying know. to be bigger than yourself, which you know, I, we all want to be, but it's literally yeah. impossible. Yeah, so yeah. like, I don't know, man. I've been and I've been trying to like center myself and trying to get back into like, all right, let's just let's just do the things that 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 make you happy. You enjoy this, like, just do it, you know. And so, um, I've been kind of been getting into gear and stuff. And so, yeah. I guess to kind of segue and like try to get back to perfect the top segue, of that perfect or whatever. Segue. Um, so I'm sure you're into like gear, like I am. Mm -hmm. uh, like, what are um. What is um when you're when you're producing and stuff mm -hmm. like what are some of the big things that you kind of your big go tos where whether it be like um, stuff for your guitar sounds or what are you using for synths or like what what's that process look like? So the the biggest thing is that I dabbled with a lot of stuff. Okay. And I think the biggest change for me was my Luke remix from Street Fighter Five, where I started mm -hmm. like I made like a new. Um, like template, like visual template for it. It like really started like, hey, this is what the YouTube is, is this. And that's when I started doing it a little bit more seriously. Um, okay. But the the thing I used to do, I used to record with the EVH 5153, Dude, uh, the 50 uh, watt model. That's like the combo. I used to take okay, this, yeah. yeah. I used to take this microphone and mic it and do mm -hmm. that. And everything off of uh, at least the first like Mega Collection album is is miked. Oh wow, that's uh, no way. Yeah. Oh it's, no, it, pretty well, good Well, I'm here. no, no. Okay, Speed <laughs> Highway. Okay, I know for a fact Speed Highway is. That Speed okay, Highway remix was was actually miked. Um, okay. and a lot of things prior, like the earlier stuff, was miked to some extent. Uh, the first piece of gear I got to like really get into. Uh, recording stuff was a Pod HD three hundred. But I still have till this day and use it for a whammy bar. Oh, or not a whammy bar, but a whammy pedal. Stuff, dude. Oh my goodness. I used, that, I used that for a long time. And uh, eventually I did get the 5153. Um, I used a some like ESP, like $300 budget guitar. You know, that okay. I, had, I used for a long time. But then I got a Wolfgang, an EVH Wolfgang uh, special. Yeah, that's the one in the thumbnail, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Sick. Yeah, matte yeah. black with the ebony fretboard. It's sleek, man. It's super sleek. That's awesome. I was like, this That's is my dream cool. guitar, man. I don't, I don't want to play anything else. Um, <laughs> and I would I, I would still mic for a long time, but then I was like, 
I'm in this little room. I mean, it's a sizable room, but it's got some noise to it. And, like, there's phasing issues and shit if you don't do it right and whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you know, it's a combo. So it's just a head and an amp. Or a head and a cabinet. Yeah. So I'm like, this is there's this little wire going from the head to the cab on the back. And I'm like, mm -hmm. what if I just unplugged that, got a cable, and then plugged that into my interface? And then Ooh. I got the the pure like preamp sound. <laughs> I was and like, oh no. <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay, cool, cool, oh, cool. Okay. What do I need now? And so yeah, I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, let me get uh let me look it up, blah blah blah, whatever. Okay, Amplitube. Okay, I'll get Amplitube and use those cabinets in them. I will bypass the the, the amp in there and just use it as the, yeah. the IR, yeah. And yeah. I did that for a long time. Man, like a long, yeah. long, long, long time. And nothing happened to your amp? Because, like, I guess, I mean, te I guess technically you're supposed to, like, unless there's, like, a like a preamp out or something on there that I'm not... Oh, yeah, yeah, no, it was the preamp out, yeah. Okay, I thought you were saying, like, you know, like, y you know how, like, tube amps are, you're supposed to have, like, the correct load connected to it or whatever? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, pretty much I was just, by because it's a combo, I'd, like, just unplug it from the speaker and then plug it in directly into my focus right for the preamp tone. And then Got I, just, I okay. just put an IR on it digitally, so I had more control over it. Okay, because they say, like, if you, um, if you, like, use it in the way that I was referring to, like, it could, you could, like, blow up your head or whatever. Like, it, that'll stop working. The, like, oh, the only thing that's ever happened to me is that I was playing one day, and the tone went out. And I was like, what happened? Oh, but it was a tube. Uh -huh. Tested it out, like, took it, took it down unhook the back, check the tubes, you know, would swap tubes out to see, like, which tube is it. Okay, this channel works now. Yeah. Okay, it's this tube. Did some research all day. It's like, this this one ordered it, put it in, it works fine. <laughs> oh, my God. Look, that, great. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. Nothing, nothing bad happened, but that's oh, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. It. No, just typical. I mean, it's, I've had it for, God, probably probably close to 10 years now. Yeah. Very close wow, to it. More. But, uh, yeah, yeah I mean, it's been a great amp and everything. Um, a noisy-ass red channel. Good grief. So, the... Uh, pedals I have are pretty, they're, they're not su anything super special. Uh, I've got the Pod HD 300 for the, uh, some compression, maybe, you mm -hmm. know, some like a driver just to kind of push it a little bit more or compressor to like tame it. Uh, anything with a whammy or, or, uh, or yeah, whammy pedal is is that. Then uh, I've used, I have an EVH Phase 90 and an EVH Flanger uh, for some effects. Yeah, and then like a, just a, just a noise gate. Yeah, the Phase 90 yeah. fucking rocks, man. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, that's awesome. and, and for guitar, yeah, I did that. And then uh, as of recently, um, uh -huh. I've gotten the Gojira X plugin. Oh, dude, yeah, that, that archetype stuff is sick. And I looked into um, it and I was like, this is my amp. It's based off the 5153. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, it's based off the EL34 model, which is um, more akin to the old Plexis. Has a little bit of a different like attack and noise to it. Yeah, and, uh, that's the same scene that the, because it's kind of... Um... Um, it's like a slightly different color scheme or whatever, but mm -hmm. that's what I've heard. That it's got it's got kind of like a, I don't know, like a more of an old school bite to it or something. Mm -hmm. And I would um. Uh, also, look at this fucking screen, bro. Oh my god, this outro screen. <laughs> let, me, let me check this out. <laughs> just it's yeah, we just... it went back to your first video. Oh my god. <laughs> oh shit! You got like the classic like, stuff. Oh no! Look, yeah, go back. Let's see. Ola. Sorry, not the, sorry. No, you're, not good, you're good. You're good. But like, oh my god! Look at that logo. That's the one I was going by G Trevino. The classic, like, yes, I play guitar. Here's the Les Paul Look, Gibson me font. On Tumblr. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, bro! So back in the day, I'm gonna change this. this. I thought I was subscribed. Subscribe. I'm gonna change this. <laughs> That's amazing. That's, That's so funny. Crazy. Um. Anyway. Um. But yeah. Uh. I I haven't tried the Gojira plugin specifically. Um. What's it called? Um. But I do have, uh, what other ones did I have? I know I have the Abbasi one, mm -hmm. Petrucci, Pliny, and Nolly. Those are the ones I have, I think. Pretty sure. As far as the, um, the archetype stuff. I think my only complaint about it is that I wish it was, there was like a dedicated loader. And you okay. could, like, when you bought one of those plugins, it would just be like an asset to the loader. But what it is as of right now, it's all one plugin. 
So if you want like the delay on one thing, but a different amp model, but then a different chorus effect, you literally have to load them all up, bypass the oh, things you don't want, and gotcha, then do it that way, gotcha, you know? Gotcha. That's something I will say like... Amplitube has over those plugins. That's the only thing it has over those plugins. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Like kind of the, the, the signal chain, like kind of workflow or whatever. Yeah, it has like the browser yeah. function and everything. It's, it's really, really user friendly, but it fucking sucks, man. Cause I was like, you know, I'm always looking for a different tone and everything. It's like, man, my fucking tone sound fucking, like I can make it work, but I have to do so much post-process to make this shit sound good. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, that's sure. why I started getting into like custom IRs, you know, mm -hmm. and like loading that up. And I got, I have a custom IR of um my actual uh, amplifier. So uh, I could just EVH like, tab? yeah. So I could like literally load it up and it sounds just like it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. It's like, wow. That's it's awesome. like miking is is kind of out of the the picture. And now since I moved to the Gojira stuff, I'm like, I've, I've been looking at my amp. Like, you know, I'll, I'll keep it for now, man. But like, shit. It almost like yeah, makes it obsolete yeah. in a way, which is crazy. Because years ago, like, remember, it's like, man, but it doesn't sound like tube, dude. It doesn't sound like tube. It's like, I know. Uh, and it kind of does, man. Yeah, that was. Uh, I remember when I bought a Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier. Mm -hmm. Um. Cause I was, oh, this is my dream amp and like the two thousand dollars or mm -hmm. however much it was and like so yeah then I bought it and like it was awesome for like two days and then like I, said, <laughs> I haven't really used it you know because it's just like you have to crank it and get it real loud and that's when I was doing what you were doing where like okay and now I gotta like mic up the cabinet and like okay and then like record my takes live without reamping or doing any of that stuff or whatever and it's just like. I don't know, man. And it's just like the quality of the recording would just vary drastically. Yeah, like some it's days really you would have like the perfect like 57 on the axis. Like you got mm -hmm. it, man. You fucking got it. Other days you're like, yeah. like, bro, this doesn't even sound like it's in phase. And there's nothing yeah, else you, for it to be out of phase with. <laughs> it just yeah, sounds like it's shit. Like it's just one microphone. It's like, <laughs> how does it sound like this? It's just, yeah, it, it's just miking up really anything. It's just, it's so, it's, it's, it's an art form um and it's just it's something that i just i never had um so yeah i totally feel you on that but that's really cool dude with the like with the custom evh ir and stuff to, to just like you just have your sound now you know mm -hmm. i mean I, I, i'm always like looking for for new tones and everything and like looking for the dream sound because like i'll achieve it for a bit and I'll be like oh yeah this is it this is it man and then i'm like mm -hmm. mm, i want more <laughs> yeah I, i'm still looking for it but i think that's the uh that's the tone chaser in me. And I think us, like some guitar players focus on it. I feel like probably not enough. But I can tell me and you, we're, we're tone chasers. And that's a completely- Dude, I fucking focus on the shit way too much. I need to, like, <laughs> yeah, it's fucking addictive, man. I need to like, okay, this sound is good. Now practice, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or it's... now write. Like, you know, like I have to like, it's such a rabbit hole. Like, it's just uh, like, I love it. And then I don't love it. I don't know. <laughs> And you're just like, I, sh I just need one more pedal, man. I just need one more plug and I just need one more of this. And it's like, bro, it never yeah. ends. Like, just do what you can with yeah. what you got, but but there's a sale going on. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. You, you get those emails in, you're, it's like, hey, guess what? Fucking uh, this plugin is $20. And you're like, oh, fuck, no, man. Oh, no. <laughs> it's, yeah, like, oh, it's, oh, man. Yeah. it's just, no, I totally feel you on that. Yeah. yeah. Sales and stuff like that are, are, are the bane of my existence. It's so hard not to, not to get into it. Yeah, I'm seeing you got like a bunch of rack effects and everything. Break down what you use currently. Oh, yeah. Um, I Honestly, I try to keep it like very simple. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I guess kind of like uh, you in a way, like you kind of like you found the sound that works for you or the brands that you like or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been like a line six guy forever mm. and ever and ever and ever um you know and that's not me saying like oh this is the best or whatever because there's a bunch of stuff out there but like i don't know for me the workflow of um the helix has just been like i just love it i don't know i just love it so much um so you know i, I use that for the for for everything like i don't you know all my effects um you know i, I mean if i'm mixing like delays and stuff i'll do in the box mm. with, like I don't know, like, you know, like for, a, I'll use like H delay or something for, you know, to, to kind of control all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, but when I'm designing a sound that I'm going to play live or whatever, like that's what's great about it too, is because, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I play shows and stuff too on top of that. So, you know, it's nice to kind of keep the tone kind of consistent 
uh, between like you know uh, making videos and like performing live and stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's that's really the bulk of my um, the guitar tones, and then like um, I have a Line Six Helix rack um, right here on my desk mm -hmm. that I'll use to, to track with, um, and like I'm it's it's crazy because I'm really only using it to hear it like in real time right so i'm yeah. hearing it like through my interface with no latency um you know and i'm still using it to like design like the sounds and stuff but then i'll just record like the di's um and then drop drop that into um the helix native plugin um that way i have even more control of it like when it comes to mixing and stuff like if i need to change something i'm not committed to like a certain tone or whatever so like mm -hmm. i just i'm just it sounds like i'm an ad for like lane six or whatever but it's just it's just what i use all the time no nah, yeah bro um, it was um i've been digging more into like because because i've been such an analog head right mm -hmm. for, for so long like try to if, if i could mic it you know proper and have like proper treated room and everything i would mic it more but um as time went on i'm like I'm like how does especially with lead tones right i'm like how the hell does like oh, somebody like man, little v mills get such a clean ass tone like what the fuck is he using yeah. helix oh okay so, uh, yeah there you go yeah and i'm like is it is it really all like are we there it's all digital now I'm like shit man i mean it, it's very much heading that way and i'm not saying that i'm not saying that the like tubes and stuff are it still absolutely has a place especially i think i think high gain is covered and i think yeah. maybe some some ultra cleans are covered but I think that dirty to crunch uh, still has a long way to go across the yeah, board. Yeah, but like the like mid gain breakup with all mm. the dynamics and stuff like that's still really hard to replicate. And mm. like, if I really want to put in the time, like you know, like I like I mentioned, I do have like a like a Mesa Boogie dual rectifier. Yeah. Um, and I'll, uh, you know, I have a a torpedo reload, um, which is a like a uh, a load box mm. that'll capture like you know the raw preamp sound of of the mesa and then i can use that to you know to record with or whatever if i really and i've done that for a couple of videos um but you know sometimes you know it, i just it's really a lot of it it's so much just it, it's convenience and like what you were saying earlier um with uh third party irs like it really just opens up the sound a bunch like as much as i love the helix and they've done like updates and stuff mm -hmm. um in the past to kind of like correct this issue or whatever but the stock like the stock cabinets or the stock cab irs or whatever that that came with the helix when it launched like were something to be desired uh, yeah you know, i'm just gonna be like completely honest you know it's one of those where it's just like i remember i remember making the jump from the pod hd to the helix and like the biggest difference that i felt was that I, was immediate for me was like the feel right right like the response like okay yeah. this feels more genuine or whatever but like as far as like sound quality i'm like oh this sounds like very similar it doesn't sound like it's not really blowing me away or whatever mm -hmm. um and once i discovered like what an ir was and how to load that in or whatever um that really changed the game for me so um so i'm really using that for like you know really all the high gain stuff um and then i'm using um uh I don't know if you're familiar with get good drums and all all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, so I'm using a lot of that for like for drums and stuff. But they also put out a bunch of uh, you know, like cab IR things or whatever. And they came out with their um, the Cali Massive um, cab pack, which mm -hmm. is just like you know different speakers and variations on the on you know just the classic Mesa Boogie dual rectifier cabinet with a um, with a Celestion V30 with different Celestion V30s actually. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, I've been using that, like, I just been using that a bunch and just like, kind of like, I've been really not trying to think about it so much these days. Um, cause I would really get like anal about that stuff back in the day. Like I was like, Oh, I got an AB, oh, these two cab IRs. And I, then I, oh, okay, let me bounce out like two mixes and like listen to them back to back. And like, mm -hmm, like this sounds better. And I'm, I'm just like, I don't know. I'm just like, so not about that anymore. Um, and I just, I just feel like. I just feel free now. <laughs> I just yeah, feel like it's... I can like have fun and like not really like tie myself down to like, um, you know, those sorts of things or whatever. Yeah, um, me, me and my uh, other producer friends who do a bunch of like they, they focus mostly on rap and stuff and everything. But it's mm -hmm. when you're working on a song like from from start to finish and you start tweaking those knobs like that, we call it ant funking. Okay, because you're yeah. fucking with ants. <laughs> you're fucking with small things instead of like actually working yeah. on the. Uh, 
I'm actual like, thing. Important? Yeah. Yeah. So now, now, like, if I need a like a sound or whatever, like, oh, I need a clean tone, then I like, I'll pick an amp in the helix that's like, okay, this is gonna give me this vibe or whatever. Okay, I need a delay or, or I don't know or whatever a compressor or whatever, and I just kind of throw it on and tweak it to where like, okay, that sounds cool. And then I just been like committing, and I'm just like, okay, and then just moving on, which is like, like a vast departure on how I would do things mm -hmm. in the past or whatever. Um, so there's so there's like the amp stuff, um, and that's what I've been using most of the time. And then like you know, I'm a big uh, Schecter guitars guy. Mm -hmm. Um, I love my Schecters. I have a lot of them. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, like, um, for most of them, like, um, you know, I've been, uh, you know, kind of, you know, I'm always switching out stuff like, um, they like to get really nerdy, like pickups and stuff. And I'll like, yeah, you know, solder, I'll change the wiring on them and like, okay, this will give me these tones or whatever. And so I've been doing that for, for like, you know, years and years and years now. It feels like. Um, so I'll do a lot of that to kind of like get the sound going right now. So right now I've been really big on, um, the Seymour Duncan, um, Pegasus and Sentient set, Ooh. like that, that kind of combo, yeah, um, yeah. has been like, I forget which guitar. Oh, it's the Reaper, the uh, Schecter Reaper that I put yeah. those pictures in that. And I was like, oh my God, this is, and it's just, it just, it's, I can, it's just, it's an evolution, right? Because I can see myself like growing. Because like I remember I tried the Pegasus pickup, um, like years ago, and I didn't vibe with it. I'm like, oh, like it's not like, because it's not a very like high output pickup. It's mm -hmm. um, it's more of a medium output pickup, and the way it's like with the with the Alnico magnet in it, it's it's really designed with that kind of output. It's really designed to like, the fidelity comes from you know, um, the articulation and like you can really hear chords and like mm -hmm. things like that but back in the day when i tried it i'm like oh this is like this is weak bro i don't like this or whatever and now that i'm like you know much better at like you know gain staging and like not using too much gain on like amps to make them sound cool or mm -hmm. whatever like i came back to it i don't know what brought me to like come back to it and now i'm like oh this pickup rules dude like if you need like you know um if you need more juice like you know turn up the gain on the amp or, or whatever but like the articulation that you get out of that pickup is just like, oh my god, like I, I'm really stoked on that right now. But I'm always trying different things, you know. I've tried like Fishman stuff, and um, I think those are the only two actually. Never mind, just Seymour Duncan and Fishman stuff uh, mm -hmm. back and forth. But like, you know, different, different. You know, they offer lots of different pickups and stuff. But like, I'm really big on, big on that, those sorts of things too. And like, really dial in, like you know, and really get lost in like the gear world you know so it, it's it's yeah. so fucking easy man i i had this crazy situation with um i got the evh amp many mm. years before and i was playing it through my um my esp like it's it's like three h it's some just 300 dollars fucking guitar yeah and um mm. i played it for years and years and years and like i'm, I'm so used to like like growing up having like budget guitars and then like a little mm -hmm. shitty amp and so my, the way my playing would evolve is that because I didn't have the gear to be as distorted as I wanted to, mm -hmm. my playing accommodated for it. I started okay. really digging the fuck into those strings, like super, super hard. Yeah. And so what happened is that years down the road, um, we got that, uh, what was it? The, uh, the, the check, the COVID check, right? And I was like, mm -hmm. I was like, oh shit, like I'm fine. I'll just buy this guitar. Yeah, let's fucking go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so and so I got oh it, and yeah. I I finally have the combo because like the amp is made for the guitar because it's like Eddie shit, you know, yeah, that he used for touring and recording. Designed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I plugged it in, and I hit that shit, and I'm like, oh, holy shit! Yeah, I was like, oh my god, so much output. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. they are wound like a motherfucker, dude. They are tight as shit. They are hairy. Yeah. And I was like, I remember playing. And Don't take that out of context, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing, and my friend's like, damn, you really dig into those strings. And I'm like, I guess it's because the thing I had was shit. I guess I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. yeah. Sonic Anime, welcome to the fucking chat, bro. Oh, Sonic X Anime DX. Hi. Oh, man, they're great. They're, they're always watching the streams and stuff. Thank Hell you for yeah, stopping okay. by. Yeah, real talk, real talk. Um, what's it called? Um, 
Yeah, dude, that's super. Yeah, that's oh, and that's like another thing too. Like once you buy your like your first like big boy guitar. Yeah, the big boy guitar. And you're like, oh shit. You're like, like, oh man, this is awesome. Like I like um um kind of kind of a weird story. I'm not sure how familiar you are with like um like Hispanic culture. Um, in, like, a little bit. I'm, I'm from the south, so like a little bit of it, yeah. Okay, so like girls get a quinceanera when they when they turn fifteen, mm -hmm. right? Is if they're becoming a woman or whatever, right? Yeah. And so my mother wanted to do something nice for me for my fifteenth, and I'm like, bro, I'm not a I'm not your daughter. <laughs> 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 that's it, like I'm like, not. I appreciate it, but like, geez, that's like having a sweet sixteen for like sixteen year old boy, and you're like, oh. correct, yeah, exactly, exact same idea. Yeah. Um. So I convinced them. I'm like, hey, like instead of throwing a party. And spending all this money on like something that like I'm not even into because at, at that time I was like very much very introverted and it was very hard for me to you know to socialize or whatever. Oh yeah, same here, bro. Money, and I get to pick like one really awesome gift or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. And so like and so they were like, yeah, okay, that sounds cool. Like let's do that or whatever. And so um, I, what I wanted was a uh, was a Gibson Les Paul Studio mm -hmm. was, was what I wanted. Um, and it was like a, like an ebony one because it was the exact same one that Ryan Key from Yellow Card played. And mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's what I wanted, you know? And it's so funny because I hear you like, oh, Eddie was like one of my influences. And so I got the EVH amp and I got the EVH guitar and like, and it's just like, it's, I'm so, I'm the same way. Cause it's I'm the like, same oh, fucking yeah, thing, like, man. It's the same thing. You yeah. want the signature model because it's what your guy yeah. plays, you know? Yeah. It was like, yeah, I want Gibson Les Paul and I want a Mesa Boogie because they play Mesa Boogie. And like, it's just, it's just, hilarious but like um but yeah I remember like playing like a real guitar i guess like after that it's just mm -hmm. like wow that's awesome and it's funny too because it's like you know I, I i still have this guitar and, I, and I, I love it to death and everything but like it's it's crazy how like i'm not into that style that much anymore like i don't know like it like and and i'm sure it'll change like it'll come and go or whatever um but like right now i'm on this path of just like like you were saying, I like super strats and I like the efficiency of them. And like, oh, it, it's almost like a race car. Like, you know, oh yeah, absolutely, like, man. You know, everything from strings to 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 the Floyd Rose, you know, being perfectly level. So everything has to like, you know, kind of function as as a machine. Where it's mm. like, where like the Les Paul is more like, I don't know, it's kind of like a Mojo machine. And when I play it, I feel like I'm way slow on it. You know, like I'm like, oh, I can't like. Like like auto runs would feel really hard on this or or whatever, um, but like I don't know, then, I mean, then maybe next year like I'm not into like the shred thing anymore, and I just want to play blues and then I can just whip out the Les Paul or or whatever. Yeah, get the Les Paul and like dial in the uh, the mid gain and just let that shit resonate. Yeah, and then I sell the Helix and then I get like a Marshall and then like I'm doing that and it's just like, <laughs> you know, it just it you start getting telefucking uh, microphones and shit, <laughs> starting yeah, to record yeah, yeah, the room yeah. noise. Like, oh, God, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't know. Like, I'm always like on this journey of like, okay, I'm gonna find like the perfect thing, right? Mm. And it just never, it never ends. You know, it just, it, when, I always want to change this or, oh, but if I get this and then you know, companies will come out with a new model or a new thing. I'm like, well, I gotta have that too. And like, it sounds way better than the old one. And like, you know, it just, it's. I don't know. It, it never, it never fucking ends, man. But you know, it makes me feel a lot better about what I do, because mm -hmm. when it comes to at least some of our peers and everything, I feel like, at least for me, before I knew you did that, and like I seeing all your effects, I'm like, he definitely goes into it, right? But there, oh, there are times where I'm like, man, this fucking tone, dude, this tone sucks. Why the fuck are you rocking with this tone? It's uh -huh. shrilly and high end. There's like no mid. It's yeah. like there's no attack and everything, and it's like it makes me feel good that like I'm not the only one at least thinking about it all the time yeah well because i mean there is like you still you still have to think about it a little you can't mm. just like all right this the sick distortion and just like whatever because then like i don't know like distorted guitars are just like you know i love them but it's just something that can be so uncontrollable and chaotic like so fast if you're just like not like dialing it in perfectly or whatever um but maybe that's the sound you're going for i don't know like it just it really just depends and like mm -hmm. i don't know I don't know. I could talk about it forever, but like, but yeah, um, check their guitars and line six. And, um, that's what I'm using for recording and stuff. Yeah, but, uh, stick to what stick to your guns and rock that shit. Yeah. How do you get your, uh, um, your bass tones? 
Um, for my bass tone, I really don't think I have that great of a bass tone. I feel like it's something that's really a I don't think area. I have a good one either, so I was asking you. <laughs> okay, for sure. Um, yeah, I really feel like that's just like a... Because I spend so much time on the stupid guitar, mm -hmm. right? That then I spend five minutes on arguably the most important instrument in a mix. I'm glad someone <laughs> fucking said it. Yeah, bass is so you know, fucking important, just, dude. It just... It is. And it's just like, oh my god, like, what... It, and then and then it's flat and then it sucks or whatever so uh, for my my bass tone um i get the the signal path is i have a couple of Schechter bases surprise um and then uh what i'm doing is kind of kind of a, a weird thing i'm using um an mxr um compressor mm -hmm, like a bass natural. compressor yep that's not that's not the weird part for me the weird part is that i that i go into that first and then from there i then i go into a di box and, and kind of take in uh, this is what i've been kind of doing lately is taking in you know like yeah, i'm not like overly compressing it but like kind of taming the transient information or whatever oh yeah i, I constantly in. run through i run my um i have a uh, fender squire or it's, it's a squire jazz bass but it sounds fucking amazing for what it is um, dude i had a squire uh a squire a jaguar bass yeah it's because uh, you're used to the fucking guitar sucking ass and i was like i was literally uh -huh. i went to guitar center and tried them, and I almost got this. That's um, exactly what I did. I got. I was. That's... I was trying out the Ernie Ball Stingray. Uh huh. And I was like, this. This might be it. Yeah, this might be it. Mm -hmm. But then I saw the the jazz bass, and I was like, Well, Mio from Kaon plays that one, mm -hmm. and it's sexy and it's classic. Okay, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> yeah, and I yeah, played yeah. it, and I'm like, Oh, bro, this sounds. This sounds way better. Looking back on it, I'm like, Yeah, because the strings were newer. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, the, oh string, my god. the strings yeah. are newer, but I still love it. I still love it a lot. Billion percent. But yeah, I did the exact same thing. Like, I set myself, like, a budget. I don't, I don't remember how much mm. it was, but I was like, okay, I need a bass or whatever. I'm going to go to Guitar Center. This is my budget, and I'm just going to try everything. You know, this yeah. fits the budget, you know, within reason, too. Like, I'm not going to bit like, if it's, like, a hundred bucks, I'm like, all right, it's probably going to suck or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, but then I picked up, it was, it was a Squire jazz bass. And I was just like, oh my God, this rules. This sounds so good. And it was probably a combination of things or whatever, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah. And then I eventually, I eventually did get rid of it, but like, you know, and I, I, I love the, the, the new bases I have now, but like, dang, that, that Squire bass had like some kind of mojo about yeah, it. Yeah. There's I'm something like, about like, maybe it's because the guitars suck that the bases have like the little extra mojo on them. Yeah, I don't know what I it is, man. Because because the build is better than any Squire guitar. It sounds fucking yeah. great. There's nothing wrong with it. It's great. Yeah, exactly. And like you know, and I don't have any like um um I don't know like um what's the word I'm looking for? Like I'm not above using like a budget guitar or anything. Because mm -hmm. if it's if it's awesome, it's awesome. You know. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, and sometimes I'm like, oh, man, should I? Have, why did I get rid of it? You know, like <laughs> yeah, you're like, damn, it, it that's sounded stuff. awesome. I don't know. I guess I'm trying to get Schecter to sign me or something. I don't know. <laughs> that's probably what. Bro, it is. I've been trying to get the EVH deal low key for years. Yeah, exactly. It's just like you know, and it's like it's not only like just cause, oh, like oh, sign me or whatever. Because yeah, like yeah. then like you would be you would be trying anything and everything, right? You'd be like, oh, let me try this guitar, get them to sign me, and let me try that other brand or whatever. But yeah, like, yeah you like the brand that you like because you genuinely like their product yeah. you know like i like i like this brand and like every time i pick up this brand for me i'm like yes the quality for me it's just it's always there you know um so yeah uh so for uh, back on the topic of like bass tones or whatever mm -hmm. uh, or compress it on the way in and this kind of this is like a new thing i've been doing um and then um you know i just um i'm doing it's it's like a split thing that I learned from um, there's this guy Taylor Larson who um, you know he, he does a lot of like the, the gent stuff I guess we'll call it he mm -hmm. does a bunch of that stuff and I was watching you know a live stream of his or whatever um, and uh, he uses Pro Tools and I use Pro Tools and in Pro Tools you get a free um, uh, Sansamp plugin like it comes with Pro Tools yeah um and it's uh you know it's like one for one uh you know plug-in recreation of the real pedal or whatever and so basically um you know i duplicate the di and you know 
and just process it, process them in different ways so that mm. like so the high end is just like really you know like i'm boosting a ton of 1k and like it gets really um like nasty and gritty I, you know and then on the on the low end I, you know i you know there's like no high end on that and it's just like it's really compressed and it's just kind of like a really consistent really clean low end sound and it's just really a blend of those two um and then you know i'll automate like the bass grit sound um higher or lower depending on the part mm -hmm. you know so if it, needs, if it needs to sound more aggressive then it's it's louder or if we're going for a soft part then it's quieter and that's just kind of that's just kind of what i've been doing um lately um um i haven't really you know i have a couple of bass sounds that i've used in the helix mm -hmm. um but right i'm just using like the plugin that comes with pro tools for my bass stuff hey man yeah. if it works it fucking works and honestly if it's in the box the more in the box these days the better for recording yeah because it just it just lives there you know mm -hmm. um, so that's that's what i've been using really so oh yeah bro it's fucking fight yeah, for me, it's um, it's pretty similar when it comes to uh, the bass tone, and it's also extremely erratic because I I tend to mix things different way depending on like what I'm trying to offer in the song, right? Um, but it's a similar <laughs> thing like DI directly into the focus rate, um, then compress it with a multi band to tame the lows, okay, uh, and then uh, add ample tube on there. Actually, use the ample tube for that. Um, and now I've been bypassing the IR on that because they all suck. And I've been using a thing called uh, Cabinetron, which is a... Oh, what's Cabinetron? Cabinetron's fucking cool, man. It's a uh, it's strictly an IR loader. But what you can do is that, let's say if you... And, and I might be opening up the Pandora's box here telling you this. There's like oh. nine or eight like slots to put in IRs. So what you can do is load in three completely different ones or ones that are similar, but like different mics. And you can blend them using a graph. So oh, let's no. say you have, you have three tones. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm telling you, man. There's three tones. It's like a triangle, and there's a dot in the middle. And then you move it, and it changes the tone while you're moving it. it. It blends them all together. And the best thing about it, man, the godsend, something I didn't even know I needed, it has um, phase correction. Yo. So what? like, let's you have three of those tones, obviously probably clashing with each other. You load them all yeah. up. Find the tone you want to be like phased two. And then, you know, do a little setting, boom, by being, and it phases to that signal that you clicked. What? It's really fucking cool. And I'm sorry yeah, I told I'm you, because like now you're going to be looking into it. <laughs> no, 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 you're fine, because I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, I, this is, this seems cool. I don't need this in my life. I, oh, yeah, no, you, you've you completely, like, bypassed it completely, you know. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, no, but, like, it, uh, that's crazy. That is, because, like, even when it comes to, like, when I'm like creating my tones or whatever, I really try to keep a mindset of like, I really keep it as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, even with the IR choices that I have or whatever, like I don't, I don't even blend the mics or anything like that. I'm like, okay, like here's a 57 or whatever. And it sounds great in this position or whatever. And I just leave it. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm going to walk away. Like, it's just, you know, yes. Could I put more time into it and get like a cooler tone a fuller tone or whatever? Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Um, and at some point, yeah, I would love to like delve back into that world or whatever, but like this is crazy. Yeah. I'm just looking at like, oh my God, is it on sale? No, it, it probably goes on sale pretty often. You know, if, yeah. if I, if I see it on sale or something, I'll, I'll pass it and everything. The thing for me is that like, I can kind of get into that more without much restraint because unfortunately I don't have a way to play live in any kind of capacity. So like I'm not worried. Let me make impossible shit, <laughs> you know. Oh for sure. Oh for sure. And like yeah. that's probably a better mindset to have too, because I'm always thinking about like, well, how's can I play this live also? You well, know? well like, that's that's I, a like... great mindset because even with um, even like like with Van Halen, you know, they mm -hmm. at least for the instrumentation. Forever, like every single album they ever did, the instrumentation was all played together. Oh wow! And when they played live, it was the tone. It sounded like that. Yeah. It sounded like the record. Hell, it sounded better than the record because it sounded like the record, but live. Yeah. You know? So I definitely understand, like, having a combination of, like, having a, a mixed, like, studio and live kind of thing. Because I remember years ago, the I, I remember reading on a forum when I was looking up, like, June Sonoy tones, and I was like, 
It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, June, Ju June's tone is like a studio guitar tone. And I was like, what's the difference, <laughs> man? I don't understand what that means. I'm like 14, 13, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. Uh, I remember it was like Tokyo Game Show 2008 or 9. And I was like, bro, he's playing live? Yo, that's fucking sick. And I was like, oh, oh no. He sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Wow. I was like, he wow. sounds horrible, but it's because he is such a like tone guy that when it came to playing live for the first time, it was this like 5150 or Soldano in a cabinet and like maybe a paddle. <laughs> yeah. You know? But yeah, like, and it's it's a signal chain where it's just like on paper it makes sense I guess where it's just like okay pedal amp, guitar, okay it should be it should rule or whatever, and yeah I, because I think I know what you're talking about I think mm -hmm. this is his Aldano yeah and yeah the tone was just like like I love him and everything but I'm like good lord yeah you know? even even now like I think he's recovered mostly from and everything mm -hmm. but like looking to uh like the 30th anniversary stuff and everything I'm like. You know, I know you can't, I mean, you can, you can have a pedal board and click that fucker in and have a lead tone, but yeah. I'm like, he's, he's got this really kind of J Rocky finished tone, you know, now it yeah, is. Yeah, I think it's, I, th I think, yeah, I think uh, you may, you raise a good point too, because I think that's just kind of like, um, I think a lot of that is like his style where it is kind of mm -hmm. like a, maybe not, not as a. Uh, like I'm not, and this isn't me ragging on on him as a. Oh no, absolutely incredible. No, yeah, absolutely. But it has kind of like a like a like a looseness to it, and almost kind of like an in like imperfect imperfect. You know where like you're hearing like I don't know like string noise or like or like whatever. And, um, and the thing is with him is that with like a punk band, you want that. With a ska band, you want that. You want something. Exactly. You, you want it raw, right? But we're so used exactly. to his very. Like if, if there's one thing that is kind of the difference between me and him, I'm I let shit hang pretty hard, but I make sure that when it hangs, it sounds good to some extent, right? Mm -hmm. But he's so yeah. composed with his articulation and his solos and everything. It's like, how can the guy that did like the live and learn solo, like that solo sounds so fucking crazy. Art, mm -hmm. Like the articulation, the bends are correct. Everything's perfect. It's like the perfect take. It sounds fucking great, mm -hmm. and even he can't play it the way he did. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm just yeah, like yeah. then. It's like he's created this version of himself that's like not real. It, it's so crazy. Yeah, and like I, you know, um, I fall into that hole a bunch too because I get so hyper fixated on like the the best take possible or whatever, and it's just mm -hmm. like well. Sometimes, and this is, again, this is more of a newer thing for me. Sometimes it isn't about, like, getting the cleanest take or getting, you know, the most perfect, you know, my the perfect articulation mm -hmm. or whatever. Sometimes it is it's just grabbing, like, okay, like, put the mojo in here and can you recreate that in, like, real life or whatever? Yeah. You know? Because um, I feel, you know, because I feel like that's, when I look at my solo stuff, I feel like that's, you know, for me, that's a, bit, like, a huge weak point in my playing is mm -hmm. like a lot of the lead stuff um because i feel like it does sound you know like a bit sterile here and here and there where mm -hmm. it's just like yes you played it correctly to the click and everything sounds you know you know on time or whatever yes those you know uh, 16th runs like yep it's clean or whatever it is but like it's like ah oh, but I'm, I'm not feeling um an identity i don't it doesn't sound like oh who, who's this guy playing or whatever you know mm -hmm. it's not like you know like i think about some of my favorite guitar players and like you hear them play or their tone or even you know eddie van halen you hear his guitar and you know it's him you know yeah. and he's you know he's doing a lot of great stuff too where he's tapping and doing all these technical things but it, it's also like he's got his vibe and it's and it shows through on the recordings and in, in, in his playing and stuff and so um so yeah, maybe, maybe you do have a good point in where like, yeah, where, where maybe June is like doing um, very much a studio thing where it's just, it's so perfect that it's just like, oh, I don't know, you can't recreate it live or whatever. Yeah, it's like hard know? to translate over into a live setting because it is so like that, right? Like I learned recently that his tone off most of SA2 
was a fucking Pod Pro. No way. It was a fucking Pod Pro, dude. You can go on his Twitter, look it up. It's a Pod Pro. I'm like, no fucking way. And, and there's this video online of this guy like breaking it down. Like, I can, I, I want to get to that maybe a little bit at some point. But he actually uploaded the IR for the cabinet impulse or something. It was something from the pod because his tone off all of that. The live and learn preset is 5B off the pod Pro XT or just the, just the pod Pro actually. And I'm like, what? I'm like, no fucking way, bro. So like I went to the guy's thing, downloaded the IR, put it in Cabinetron. I, I recently just got into Gojira. So I'm like, okay, I have the Gojira mm -hmm. plugin, turn the IR off on this and then have the Cabinetron IR for this tone. I played and I'm like, holy fuck it, that's it. It was a pod the entire fucking time, dude. Oh my god. Well, see you later. I'm gonna get a pod or whatever. <laughs> but the thing I is, pod, those pods sound like shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, I'm like how is it possible? Yeah, he but said he used like... um, he used a pod pro on SA2, like a majority mm -hmm. of SA2, uh, including Live and Learn, including like Eggman, including almost all of it. And then I kind of oh, knew this. All the iconic shit, huh? I kind of knew this because I like. I, I like to read like the notes, you know, and like yeah, albums sure. and stuff. And he thanked line six in the Sonic Heroes soundtrack. So I'm like, oh, he's oh probably God. using using a pod there too. And he was, he's using a pod pro XT for, for oh all God. of it. Oh my God. I'm like, bro, I don't know how okay. you're making that shit sound even remotely good. I, love, I just, I feel like I'm closer to June now with this information. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fucking crazy, man. It's fucking crazy. He's just using that, that simple wild. shit. And, okay. And like, okay, to kind of put a, like not a bow like i'm not i'm not i'm not trying to wrap up or whatever oh, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. to put a put a like a theme to what we're talking about like we get so hyper fixated on like you know we had we had been talking about like gear and stuff or whatever for like an hour or whatever now yeah and it just kind of goes to show that like sometimes like the songwriting or whatever is like it, it rules above all else oh absolutely you know? man. like it's i just like I, i've been getting into um like sample CD stuff for, for about a year now, you know, like really digging okay. into like the old, like Cubase, not the Cubase, the uh, sound cube stuff and everything and like the, the zero G stuff. And I, I got, I had to go everywhere online to find a ISO loader for the uh, East West industrial dance CD. And I put it in there and I found the, the intro to Eggman. Like that, doo, tsh, tsh, doo, doo, doo. I found that in there. No way. That's so cool. I found the options menu, uh, tsh, tsh, like the, like that oh, snappy beat with that. Little, I found yeah. so much shit in there. I was like, wow. I was like showing my friend and he's like, you know, if anything, this proves how low the bar was back then. And it kind of was, it was cause you just had a sample CD. No one knew what it was fucking from. There wasn't like an online resource. that's like, oh, that's that. You know, it was just this yeah. mystifying thing. Like, nah, bro, it probably came from a sample CD and they used a Pod Pro. <laughs> and that's just like, that's, and that's like, I really wish I could get more into that kind of a mindset, right? Because mm -hmm. like, my brother sent me this cool video on um, like the history of like sampling in video games or something. Mm -hmm. um, and it went through, you know, everything from, you know, the different like Roland and, and Yamaha stuff into like what was in the actual, you know, the actual chip in the Genesis and, and everything in between on what it took to like to sample these sounds and yeah. what it took to like to bit crush them to death to make them small enough in order for them to, to use it and what they would do to make them loop and make them long or and whatever and it was just like they were just so limited by the hardware um and to think that with such limitations like they they, they shaped our music taste they shaped a generation they shaped um you know how i think musically or my influences with those limitations and now you know I, we live in a world now where like I, I i can open up pro tools and i have everything and i can't create anything close to what they could back in the day with their um with the limitations that they had you know yeah, man limitation like, breeds creativity simple correct as that, and it's like you know and i think maybe that's why i've been trying to keep it more simple where it's just like I don't really want to delve into, does it sound like a guitar? Yeah. All right. Well then that should be good enough. You know, like, yeah. just, all right, let's make something cool. Like, I don't know, man. Be, music is hard. <laughs> it's fucking difficult, man. It's a fucking journey. Okay. We're yeah. going to take a quick, um, 
bathroom break, fucking two, two, five minutes or whatever. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And we'll be right back. Just hang on, everybody. Okay, we are back. Right. Let me check my notes here. Lengthy nerd conversation about gear. Thank God I haven't talked about gear with somebody in a long time. <laughs> Let's see. What are your favorite tracks and or your favorite OST from Sonic? Oh no. <laughs> I hate this question. I hate this question. Um, <clears throat> shoot. Um, I don't know if I could pick one, dude. I mean, I mean, cause like they're just, there's everybody loves the classic ones, right? Like yeah. SA2 was the one that like kickstarted it off for me or whatever. Um, <clears throat> but if I'm going to be a hundred percent honest mm -hmm. and this is like not a, not a jab at anybody, this, everybody's great. Um, but I think I'm more of a Tomoya Otani guy, um, than I am a Jensenoe guy. <laughs> Yeah, no, as time goes on, man, I've, I've, I've beginning to feel kind of the same thing. Like, I just, I like, I just love, like, I don't know. I love everything he does. I don't know. And it's just like, it's kind of like, not out of character, but like, he's, he's obviously very electronic, very EDM inspired, especially mm -hmm. as it, as it went on, you know? Um, but, uh, and it's such a strange choice, but I mean, I fucking, I love the Sonic Forces soundtrack. <laughs> Like I love Sonic Forces. Really? The soundtrack. Yes, it's bizarre, <clears throat> bizarre. But like, and not all of it. You know, the oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the I mean, it, to put it kindly, like the the Genesis sounding tracks or whatever are atrocious. <laughs> like they're just <laughs> like they're just not good in my opinion. Yeah, um, I, I don't know what it is about that front. You know, a lot of people get flack for for June being like, you know, on the. Uh, 
was it, Superstars soundtrack, the whole Oh my god, shit. yes. Oh my god. Oh my but, god. Uh, the thing is, it's like, everyone's calling it sound fonts. It's like, no, they were using, like, similar hardware and, like, all that kind of stuff and everything. But you gotta understand, like, I know a lot of people say, like, oh yeah, he worked on Sonic 3. He did, like, Angel Island Zone, right? It's like, no, he did, like, the Carnival bonus stage shit. Like, he, yeah. had, a, he had a very minor role in composing for that game. You know? Yeah, because he was, um... He was a, a sound director, or am I in incorrect? He um, he was just what was he doing? <laughs> That's a good question. He was still like doing stuff, and he he was really prevalent in the uh, in the Saturn era with a lot okay, of stuff. Okay, for sure. You know, okay. he did like a lot of um, some of the Sega Rally stuff. Um, okay, for sure. This one like soccer game he did. This one uh, 32x game called Metalhead. He did okay, uh, he did soundtrack right. for that and everything. But it wasn't until like he was he was paying his dues. And then when Sonic Adventure came up, he was like, oh, he's the sound director now. He gets to okay. not only write a majority of the soundtrack, but, like, direct it, you know? Mm hmm As far as, like, what song should be in it. Style and stuff. And it really, I mean, it really shaped Sonic into kind of, like, almost more of what he, what he is now with, like, adding the rock element to it. Because it was just like, oh, it was just, like... A match made in heaven for that particular character. You yeah, know? like Sonic's always been rock and roll before he was had rock music and his stuff. Yeah, and it was just like, oh my god, it's almost like why didn't we think of this sooner? You know, it's like, um, but um, but yeah, like I, th th that's just a very oddball choice, but because like I love I love uh, Moonlight Battlefield on mm -hmm. on Sonic Forces. I love that so pretty much all the vocal tracks. I like um, um Sunset Heights, I like that one, pretty good, decent. Yeah, Sunset Heights is kind of like. Um, it's got, it's definitely got more of a, a traditional kind of Sonic vibe. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, that's one that I listen to like all the time. I'm, I'm trying to think of some other ones. Oh, I, and then for me, like, uh, like the goat, um, Sonic Unleashed. Someone fucking finally said it. Someone finally <laughs> like, fucking said it, man. Um, I just, I just have to, I just have to say it. Like, I just, that game. And I, I replayed it recently for stream and like there's some parts about that game like for me personally that really don't hold up. Mm -hmm. um, like I really think they fumble it at the end, man. It, at least it got really frustrating with all the bosses and like, I, I don't know, whatever. Like Man Land um, being, uh, <laughs> I think the first time I did that was like 50 minutes and like my fastest time when I was a kid was like, yeah, yeah, it was like exactly. 20 minutes still. Oh my god, it's just like, it's relentless. And I'm like, I get that we're going for epic and scope and everything, and I commend them for it, but like, like, I just, I remember being just so excited for that game, and that game was just like my world, and like, and like everything about like the boost uh, gameplay was so cool. It blew our minds, man, because I, I know people are so tired of it now, but like, mm -hmm. he, he was so fucking fast. <laughs> It was just like, I don't, it was just like, I don't know. It just felt like, because if we think back to that time period, right? Where it was mm. just like, you know, you know, you know, the classic line, Sonic had a rough transition into 3D or whatever. Um, and like, yeah, I mean, it was true. You know, like I, as much as I love the adventure games, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like they're perfect. Um, and then, you know, from there, you know, like Sonic Heroes had its fumbles and then there was Shadow and, mm -hmm. you know, and. There was all this hype and and like yep sonic has we've been fumbling it but like sonic 06 you know this is it man it's next gen this is gonna be awesome or whatever and mm -hmm. then that like took the the franchise to to the lowest point it had ever seen at that point like literally comparable like 06 is comparable to like et atari you know Correct. that's that's yeah. bad it was, it was like yeah it was like the modern day equivalent of that at, yeah you know at that time and it was just like oh my god like is this gonna like kill the franchise it was at, at a point in time where like i don't know and i think that's what i love about like the community so much so much is that no, no matter no matter what we go through like we're always we always stick around you know we're always they're rooting for sonic or whatever yeah we're um, always saying it'll be better next time don't worry correct and like, you know, and then from there, you know, we had um, Secret Rings, mm -hmm. which, you know, I, I guess a step in the right direction, but still like not, not it. And and to look back at Unleashed, you could just tell like, oh my God, they really put, like, this was really like a conceited effort to, to course correct and to like, hey, like, you know, yeah, we fumbled it and we're going to try to make like the best Sonic game that we can. Um, 
it was literally the like I, I've I've said this to all my friends and people who know me that I've said this to will, will vouch for me here. I think that's the last Triple A Sonic game. Period. Yeah, I mean, okay, because you okay, yeah, because I was act, I was actually gonna build upon that a little bit actually, because it's just like it, it has its own identity. It does, right? It's it's very much its own. It, it wasn't copying anything, right? It created the boost formula and like all of the world building with all of like the new character designs and all the different parts of the world you can travel. And again, I'm not trying to you know pretend like it, it like it's all perfect and it works or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But like, um, it's just like I just I can't I feel I, the love pouring from the steams and like, you know, yeah, yeah, maybe the maybe the Werehog wasn't like the best or whatever. But like I don't know, like I, I like a for effort. Like I don't know, like I just. You know, I can excuse it a lot more than like, um, because it because they weren't phoning it in or whatever. And ever since then, you know, we've had also like some really awesome games too. You know, because you know we had Colors and in, in, in Generations is another game I really love. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's you know those kind of feel more like kind of greatest hits. And you know, like Sonic Mania is also one of my favorite Sonic games ever. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. It's I, I call it the easiest ten out of ten you could possibly do because all you have to do is just let the Sonic fans make their game make a classic sonic call it a fucking day oh man and that's another game where it's just like you just when playing it like a smile on my face 100 percent of the time and you could just feel i just feel the love and the care and like you know but you know it does it does lose some brownie points for like okay as much as this is amazing it's 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 still very much like a glorified um, revisit of what what made sonic awesome yeah so great cool. it's, it's it's 2d sonic generations exactly exactly yeah. and like and it's and it's great that we're celebrating all the best parts of this franchise and it's in what i love about it is, is that you know it's also bringing it into the forefront you know with the help of the movie too like kind of bringing sonic to um like a like a new generation new kids in in like oh my god to like to that brings my heart like so much joy to see that like i remember there was a point in time when we had our sonic 06s and stuff where like man this 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 might not carry on and the future seemed bleak and like mm -hmm. what is happening and now we live in a point where we're at a part where like oh my god we're getting sonic movie 3 in like a few months or whatever practically yeah, yeah in december and it's yeah. like and like look at where like look at where it's at you know and like i don't i'm gushing obviously because like you know we love sonic and we can talk about how much we love it all oh, day yeah, long. absolutely absolutely you know um but to get back to focus um yeah sonic unleashed is the last one i feel like too i can look back and like wow like this felt like its own thing, you know? Cause I mean, I, I enjoyed, um, uh, oh my God, what is it called? The new one. Oh my God. Oh, Frontiers. Frontiers. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, um, you know, I loved it a lot. Um, but it's still, again, it's, it's derivative of the same boost formula and obviously like things like breath of the wild and op other open world games and stuff have been really popular. And it's just kind of, <laughs> you know expanding on that or whatever i remember seeing it and being like fuck they did the unreal engine sonic thing they made it real mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like oh, God. do you hate those two <laughs> or is it just, is unreal it just me no no everyone fucking hates that shit at least from okay. from my camp of people we all hate that okay shit. okay because like anytime like you know i have friends like oh yeah, i'm the video game guy or whatever and they'll tag me and some like dude look at this if Mario 64 had realistic graphics and it's just fucking Mario and like <laughs> Unreal around, Engine like 4. Like and, shit. <laughs> and it's just like, I hate this. Like, this is the worst. This is the worst thing I've ever Bro, seen. Bro, you can't just put assets in a game and have the engine do most of the work and call it a fucking day. Yeah, and then it's just good. And I'm like, no, it, it just, whatever. Like, I, again, I, not I have a, a bigger point to make because I've discussed this with a lot of people and everything. And I think I might be onto it. Mm -hmm. When you look at something like Frontiers, and all obviously it's very Breath of the Wild inspired. It's very inspired by a lot of stuff. I remember playing that game and being like, this is almost cool. This is almost really cool. It's, mm -hmm. I kind of wish they did more like Tony Hawkisms with like the world. Like I want to be able to ramp off stuff and like get points yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. But then you go through all that and then you get the boss. Ah, oh. and I, I, I was spoiler free up to this point. I, I got it like day one and like, you know, didn't, see anything yeah. so no one's spoiling for me Same. undefeatable starts and i'm like bro they put postcard core in my sonic game <laughs> my my jaw dropped 
I was, I like, was like, I was actually stunned. Yeah. I was like, what? They understand? <laughs> like, like, I was like, I this was is like, fucking crazy, dude. This is amazing. Yeah, this is like the coolest shit I've ever seen. And, and like, that and became the gift for the mundanity of the rest of the game. Because you're like, yeah, I gotta beat okay. this so I can hear the next song and see the next boss fight and whoop ass and like do this thing. Yeah, and so like that's, it's cool and then it's like not cool, right? Yeah. Because like, yeah, it's awesome to like, that's kind of like your reward. And like the bosses for the most part, like are all really fun and like, you know, and that's, and I really have to hand it to that game because like, in my opinion, like, when it comes to like Sonic bosses, like they, I don't know, man, they really, they really fumble it, and it's really clunky. And I think to like, like Time Eater or whatever from Generation, oh god, or, 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 like, or the Eraser Jin, yeah. or like, or like King Arthur, or like, I'm just trying to think of like, oh my god, all of these bosses. Have been, Even like, the 2D like, games, like fucking, like Sonic bosses have always fucking yes. sucked. They just and always so, have. Yeah. For this game to like, oh, we're gonna make it awesome and fun or whatever. It's like, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to take the focus away from that, but like, um, but there is a part of like, as my, I, I do enjoy the open world aspect. I ended up enjoying it more than I thought I would, mm -hmm. um, because you know it is, you know, I, I, especially those kind of first early images and first looks. It, it just did seem kind of like, oh God, what is this gonna be? <laughs> yeah, what work? the fuck is this? Just, what's like, happening, dude? You know, and and and. You know, I think for the most part it does work in its favor, um, but I, you know, I, I think it is maybe suffering a little bit from kind of like identity crisis. Like, what is it? What is it has a lack of like art style in a way. Like, Unleashed yeah. works so good because, like, okay, it's obviously based off like certain areas, you know, and it's it's based off real life locations and everything with Unleashed. But mm. then, you know, the human characters even evolved from the Dreamcast one from Sonic Adventure. Like they're Pixar, Pixar, they're Pixar esque, you know. Yeah, they it's, look it's, it's, like characters yeah. that would fit in with like Sonic and game because they also look kind of goofy, you know. Correct. And the architecture yeah, is kind of like, goofy and everything. Yeah, Sonic himself is like just a fucking weirdo on his own, and yeah, you know, it's just, it's 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 it really is a, a a wonder on why this character works so well and why he, like there's so much appeal to him because it's kind of bizarre if you really break it down, but like. Um, but yeah, like, yes, it, it, that's a great example. Unleash really went in on like, yeah, this is kind of cartoony and out there. Let's make everything look like that. And yeah, we can make it realistic esque by like basing the different areas on different parts of the world. But like, yeah, and I think it just did it in a way where it's just like, it worked so well. And this is like, in, in Frontiers, it's like, you know, I, I did get used to it after a while, but it is sort of a thing where it's just like, I don't, I don't know if this is really working you know it's kind of like in like spider-verse you got the two different like art styles like clashing with each other or whatever yeah but like not in a fun um, interesting way it's like like just I, kind of in a weird way yeah like i remember watching like oni plays and they're playing and everything and, and Corey's like a big you know sonic fan he's a big sonic nerd mm -hmm. and everything but then lyle said something that i i just had to agree with you know i don't agree with most of his things he says he's like like yeah, like this world's like like Chris is like oh this world's like really desolate and everything and I was like yeah that's what you think of when you think of Sonic loneliness and, and desolate lands it's like exactly and it's like yeah yeah, uh, yeah, yeah there right is. on there is. it's a nail right on the head <laughs> yeah what's yeah. it called um yeah exactly because it's just like and 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 I think it it, it it serves its purpose for the story at least in, in, that in a way totally, yeah in a way it's not totally like left field but it is still very jarring from a gameplay perspective and like. There are a lot of things about that game that I do enjoy that I think, you know, the meme, we keep saying like, oh, I'm tired of calling this game, the Sonic game, a step in the right direction. We've but all said it. Every we've single it. fucking Every one of us have said it. Yeah. But like, you know, I, I, I like a lot of the writing. I like how they, they bring in a lot of the characters and they're not just like random background characters. Um, I like a lot of the music, um, you know. There's things about it that I do enjoy that I'm like, yeah, this is a step in the right direction. And then also like the mechanics of them all. So even though I don't enjoy the open world so much necessarily, but mm -hmm. like I do feel like this 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 version of Sonic feels good to play. Oh um, yeah, no, absolutely. And it's and it's and it's interesting because like you know it's still very much derivative of the of the boost formula or whatever. Um, but like even in those as much as I love Unleashed, like when you're controlling him in like those hub areas or whatever, it was a little like kind of awkward and clunky. He only really works 
when you're in the actual levels themselves, you know, because that's what he was designed to do. Mm -hmm. And in this version of Sonic and Frontiers, like, they, I feel like they really um, took their time and fleshed that out to where um, Sonic can control really well everywhere, except for the cyber stages, because they fucked that up somehow, too. But, like, um, you know, if you're going slow, like, it doesn't feel weird. If you're going really fast, it doesn't feel weird. Um, it's only in the cyber stage where they were like, well, we're just going to change it and the momentum's going to be weird or whatever. But. Yeah, the momentum was really strange. The, the the biggest thing I found out playing the game was that I was, I played through all of it and was like, uh, yeah, the, the the levels, the physics and the levels themselves are like really weird. Then I learned something like changed everything and probably unintentionally. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, because like the momentum is so static, like you stop, you go, you stop, you go. Do you know if you're boosting and you let go and you hold right and then boost again, he'll make a fucking right angle turn? <laughs> no, really? Yeah, he'll completely stop and then go that direction. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not saying it's good, yeah. but all of a sudden I'm like, oh shit. And they became my favorite parts of the game. And then I started finding the, the homing dash. Like if you homing attack a character, then boost, it like breaks the game. And that, that's where your momentum comes from. You just get launched. And you skip like oh, whole God, section of the levels and everything. Um, that's when I started. I started speedrunning those levels. I was like, "Oh, this is my. I like this part of the game now." Now, not every the the 2D sections still suck because you don't have a lot of that. Like, yeah, he's like even like slower. Exactly. Like the physics are just they just suck in the 2D version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, uh, the 3D ones. I was like, "Oh yeah, no, this is not great. It's not perfect, but this exploit I found makes it fun." <laughs> much more fun yeah and yeah. It, i mean at the end of the day it really shouldn't resort to something like that where it's just like okay now i'm breaking the game to find enjoyment out of it and like you know going into frontiers i was like you know they were kind of keeping like the cyberspace levels like kind of on the down low mm -hmm. um and once i finally saw that like oh there's like other there's like real levels i said or whatever like i was kind of looking forward to that um and at the end of my experience i ended up enjoying the open world aspect more than i did the um, cyberspace levels mm -hmm. um, which is like cool because um, it's you know it didn't turn into like a um, like a like a forces situation where like you know the biggest problem with that game is like I don't really think that game is necessarily like bad or broken per se but like oh, oh my god these levels just they just fly by you're like just you're trying to get in the groove of a level or whatever and then it's over a minute and a half later and then you're done and the game is over in like I don't know, 40 minutes or however long it takes. Yeah, that no, game. that that game suffers from kind of an opposite issue of like, it's not bad like 06. And mm -hmm. it's not great. It's like banal. It's boring. Yeah. It's just like, it just makes less of an impact, yeah. you know? Um, And uh, what's it called? I don't know. And, and sometimes it's better. It's, it's kind of like... It's like when I watch movies too. Kind of a weird thing. Like I kind of enjoy bad movies sometimes. Oh yeah. Like, like okay for sure. Like I'll put like oh that looks horrible. Let's watch it. Like you know like I'm down for like I don't know because it just makes more of an impact. Versus if I watch something like I don't know. I'm not trying to pick on like Marvel again or whatever. But like like when I saw um, Black Widow or whatever. Yeah. Like I didn't think it was a bad movie. I didn't think it was a great movie. And like I barely remember that movie. No. You know? Yeah. I had like zero effect on yeah, my brain yeah, it just doesn't, yeah and i'm like well that might as well have just not had come out you know i'd rather it been like horrible and then we all laugh about it or whatever <laughs> that's, that's kind of how i felt about good. um about <laughs> honestly the first sonic movie because when those designs came out and he looked the way he did yeah, yeah everyone's yeah. like oh no he's, oh they're fucking it up i'm like i'm going in every sonic piece of sonic apparel i have i'm gonna go get a big refillable coke I'm gonna laugh at that movie every step of the way it's gonna be a fucking blast yeah. then they yeah, fixed yeah, yeah. it but then mm -hmm. the movie was still like you know like a Nicktoons Nickelodeon funded like Paramount movie yeah, so I was like yeah, yeah. I, I kind of I kind of wish he looked it. bad for the entertainment value but it's better than yeah. he didn't because now like look where we are now because they fixed it yeah so are you are you not into the Sonic movies at all I, the first one I liked I love Jim Carrey he was great. Oh, same. Yeah, yeah. He, oh, okay. he he was super super good in that. Um, I think he honestly carried both those movies to an extent, mm -hmm. to a certain extent. 
I like Idris Elba's Knuckles. I think it's perfect casting. Oh my god, I love him as Knuckles. He's super good. Oh. It's one of those things like, I remember watching it in theaters with my partner, and we're like, oh, this is great, this is great! And then we watched it like a year down the road, and we're like, it's... Eh, it, it's not bad. You're but talking like, about the first one? No, the second one. The second one, okay. Yeah, to where I think the first one's like a little bit better than the second one. Because once that fan server's like, oh, here's Knuckles. Oh, shit, what are they going to do, bro? Oh, shit, like, what's going to happen? Like, once you kind of get that out of your system and you watch it for a second time, you're like, uh, okay, it's cute. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's interesting. I'm kind of glad you brought that up, too, because, yeah. like, I, I like them both a lot. Um, because I'm just, I, for me, I'm like, well, I'm glad they're not, like, because video game movies are traditionally, like, like just, horrible. like, have a very poor <laughs> yeah. track record, right? So for both of these movies to not be like garbage, I'm like, oh my god, that's a miracle in of itself. Um, but like, I think narratively, like, I think the first one is a little stronger. You oh know, yeah, it's actually like, a little bit stronger with the thing there. Yeah. I think introducing Tails and Knuckles at the same time was a teensy tiny bit of a stretch. Yeah, I, I think I, for me, it's um, like because Idris Elba like did such a knockout job. Amazing job. Yeah. Um, it, it kind of like um, it puts Tails kind of in a shadow because it's like, oh, this is also his debut, too. Yeah. You know, and, you know, um, and I don't know if it's just like maybe it's um, I'm just so used to Colleen O'Shaughnessy's voice and I'm, it's just kind of like on autoplay in my brain. I'm not mm -hmm. really thinking about it that much. And maybe that's why I feel like it's. Maybe it's hindering it when maybe it's really not, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just like, it's just kind of a lot. Um, and you know, it, but it is fun to see like, oh, that's like, that's a Sonic thing and Knuckles is a Sonic thing and the Master Emerald and the Chaos Emerald and like, you know, he turns into Super Sonic and like, it, it is fun to see those things um, in a movie for sure. Um, but like, I would, I would, you know, I would rather have a stronger narrative than like just a bunch of fan service stuff, you know? Yeah. And, and the thing going into the third movie is I, I was watching it and I'm like, okay, the, we're kind of wrapping up. Super Sonic has happened. And I'm like, mm -hmm. like they're not going to do shadow. Do you know how much you have to do to get to shadow? <laughs> like we haven't done chaos to imply a, a bunch of stuff. Like we have basic Dr. Robotnik Eggman. Mm -hmm. Like you, you've got to set up so much shit in the in memes aside, the things that must be done for that story for him. <laughs> for right? sure, for sure. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. there he is at the end, and I had this yeah. crazy moment where I was watching it, and this like young younger kid behind me was like Shadow, and I was like the the gap between like generations was so small right then. I was like, right. I was yeah. like freaking out yeah, too yeah. and everything. And I was like. I remember me and my partner getting in the car after, and I, I, looked, I looked at them and said, you know what's going to happen, right? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm like, Jesus. Oh, man. I just, I just, I'm just so curious how they're going to like portray all of that, you know? Like, I was like a rumor for a while that, like, I don't know, like in the UK, like it got rated like their equivalent to a PG-13 or something. Ooh. I don't know if you saw that. I think I this sure, is the one that will actually like be really good oh yeah i think okay. this one will actually be I, I have a lot of faith in this one being really good if anything it's just gonna be wild yeah i mean it's just like i don't know like that's like i don't know again me saying oh we love sonic is very redundant and i don't know why i keep saying that <laughs> um but like you know and as much as i you know i love all, all types of Sonic, all different types of gameplay. You know, I love 2D, I love 3D, you know, whatever. Um, I did grow up on the 3D stuff yeah. first. And then I kind of went back and kind of like, you know, paid paid respect to my elders and like, mm. you know, went back and, you know, really learned to love um, the Genesis stuff because it's, it's something that I didn't grow up with. And it was very kind of different from like Mario and stuff that I grew up with. Um, so it is it is something that that was kind of an acquired taste for me after the fact and now I love it Like I mentioned Mania is one of my favorite Sonic games ever. Yeah um, But like yeah, man, it's it's it like you said, it's gonna be wild and like just to see Sonic and Shadow and they'll be playing the music. It's just like I don't know even if it doesn't end up being great Which I which I like I I kind of doubt that it would really fumble it. I don't know like it's yeah No, I think it's a good hands to 
Like, yeah. like my biggest complaint for the first two movies is that they, they played it too safe. Okay, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, yeah, and I think it's it's I don't know. It's yeah. No, I I I agree with you there. Like to an extent. Yeah. Right. As as like a Sonic fan. Yeah. Like you know we we can go wild, more wild with like Sonic stuff or whatever. But I also think it did a really good job of like um like bringing in normal people <laughs> to what like know no. No. Yeah. No. Is. It's 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 a really good just like regardless of what I think of it cinematically. <laughs> as a almost 30 year old individual like mm -hmm. it's a great little kids movie man yeah it's, it's a great so, little like, kids movie yeah like i know parents can like can can vibe with it because they mm -hmm. know jim carrey or whatever and like it's great for little kids and it's just like a great little gateway into the world of like because like sonic it, what it is now it's just like it's where do you begin if somebody somebody who's never played sonic before asks you hey where do i start to me, yeah, that's just that, a, that question has become increasingly difficult to fucking it's ask. It's just an impossible question to answer because it's yeah. just like, oh, it's, it's like, what do you, well, what do you like? Because Sonic is so many different things. It can be so many different things. And so what I do enjoy about the movies is that it's kind of easing, you know, a, the general audience's hands into this world of mm -hmm. Sonic where it does get crazy, where little girls are getting murdered and like <laughs> you know like just the craziest shit like that that people don't know and i'm kind of glad that like they're kind of taking their time to like yes i agree with you there i kind of wish you know they were more um they could have gone like crazier with it or whatever but like but i also am trying to like view it from like a like a general audience perspective too mm -hmm. where it's just like okay maybe this was the right route to go like the the you know like the transformers thing where it's just like there's human characters and we got to do you know that stuff or whatever so um but yeah man i i mean i'm stoked too like i know like you know we skipped chaos and like metal sonic and like whatever but yeah because like, because when i was thinking i was like okay he's dead then what's gonna happen is that like his consciousness is like uploaded in a computer or something mm -hmm. and he was on that planet for so long obsessed with sonic so he's mm -hmm. thinking in his head, Sonic, Sonic, Sonic's like just on the brain constantly. Mm -hmm. Naturally, when he got back during his fucking downtime or between time, he's building Metal Sonic. He's building a robot Sonic. And so in my head, I'm like, okay, the movie way they could do it is that he dies and he comes back as Metal Sonic. Oh, interesting. That's kind of a cool way to like incorporate that. That's cool. I like that. Yeah, I thought that's where it was heading. I thought the next like logical step was to get Metal Sonic in there. And then they skipped so much shit, went straight to Shadow. Now I'm like, who oh boy, what are, what are we setting up here? Are we getting a little bit of yeah. adventure in there as well? Are we just skipping yeah. adventure entirely? Like, what are we doing? Well, I think it's going to be like, well, because it's like, you know, so the Sonic movie 2 isn't entirely like, you know, Sonic 3 and Knuckles or whatever, right? Like, there's yeah. elements of, you know, a few different things. And like, you know, and even, you know, and I, and I think that's kind of what I enjoy about it, too, is that this is a, you know, this is a different thing of Sonic that I can enjoy also. Mm. And it's not just like one for one. OK, we're going to follow the lore to a T or whatever, because it's like, you know, other things I've done that, too. Like, like going, I keep going back to Marvel because I guess I, I only like two things in this world, I guess, is like. You know, if, if uh, you know, if you think to like Captain America: Civil War is very different from the comic book, um, uh, the original comic book story or whatever. Mm. Um, but I, I, the way, but the way they adapted it in the movie, I really enjoyed. You know, it doesn't take away my enjoyment from like, oh, I like this, even though, you know, we're missing a huge chunk of this or whatever. So, you know, I feel like they're gonna spin it to where you know it's kind of like, I think it's gonna take influence from like both games or whatever. But it could, also, could be a lot of things. Yeah, but I'm also, like, again, trying to put myself in the perspective of a, of a studio head or whatever, right? Like, we love Metal Sonic, and we love Chaos, right? But, like, is that going to put butts in the seats? Because... Yeah, and Shadow definitely fucking will. <laughs> and ev everybody knows Shadow, you know? So, like, yeah, okay, I kind of get it, too. Like, you know, Sonic Movie 2 we're introducing like tails and knuckles and like, okay, we got to have them for the second movie. And now it's like, okay, now we get to introduce like the next big shit. You know, like if we were if Sonic movie three was just like, okay, we're going to do Sonic CD now or whatever and introduce Amy or, or whoever. Like, I don't know if that would have been the right way to go to like get people to like watch the movie. 
you know um so not to, i'm not and that's not me like disagreeing with what you're saying oh yeah no but no, i no. I kind of, I, I, me, I tend to play like devil's advocate all the time. I'm like, well, Bro, I'm the same yeah, I would have enjoyed, yeah, I would have enjoyed this, but like, also, like, well, you know, that's why they put the black suit in Spider Man 3 or whatever, right? Even though that movie ended up being like a disaster or whatever. It's yeah, because like, like Venom, um, even though we weren't there yet, like, that's what people wanted to see. What was know? it? Sam Raimi just wanted Sandman because he was a big golden era guy. But then, yeah. um, what was his fucking name? Avi Arad. Avi Arad. He's like, nah, man, you gotta add like Venom in there, man. And he's like, he's exactly, like, who's Venom? Exactly. Who's Venom, exactly. dude? So they shoehorn yeah. all this stuff in here while Sandman was the most compelling character, villain in that movie. He had a story. Yeah. He was gray as shit. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't know how to feel about him. You know? Yeah, and I and I love that this movie has gotten kind of like a second life now, now that people have like can look at it for what it is because i know you know it was like critically panned and people made fun of it or whatever and even you know and again i try to be as objective as i can you know i grew up with the toby Maguire movies but i mm -hmm. you know i also have to look at the parts that aren't good and the parts that are that are good or, or whatever mm -hmm. um and uh and even though spider-man 3 is a bit of a dumpster fire like there are so many elements of that movie that i i really do feel like are genuinely good and like you, like you were saying, um, Sandman is definitely one of those points in that movie. Oh, absolutely. Um, where like, I mean, I wish he would have gotten more development. Uh, but like even, you know, everybody talks about like um, the sand um, transformation scene and how beautiful it is. That and shit is still words. unbelievable. It's still yeah. crazy how they did it. Yeah. And it's still like, and, and even to this day, I really feel like the CGI really does still hold up. You know, and I feel like I'm not looking at it with like rose tinted. Oh yeah, no, like the whole scene where like he's he's turned to sand and everything, and he reaches for the ring, and like his hand like goes through it at first. Like yeah, that shit is like, still oh, super technically impressive. And it's like technically impressive, and it looks great, and it's also like, oh, this is a parallel in the storytelling because he can't reach his daughter or whatever. And it's yeah, like, it's, it's it's a like, really well written scene. It's just it's just shit that like you don't see in like Ant Man Quantumania or whatever. Oh like, yeah, they just no. Don't make them like that, you know. And it's just like, and this is the this is me, you know, being the old man on like my pedestal or, or whatever. But like, um, and I don't even really know how we got on this topic of of, of uh, oh because of you know, trying to create marketing hype or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They did put in Venom or whatever, and it really undermined. Like, I really wish there was a version of this movie where you know we didn't have venom or whatever but like how big of a villain is sandman that he's gonna put butts in the seats yeah because like first you had like green goblin that writes the story for you oh, doc yeah, ock was like, incredibly incredibly compelling oh man yeah and um, so like okay sandman is like well you and i know sandman but like do normal people know sandman yeah he's he didn't really have that much at least from like the golden age comics he was kind of a, a like a brute you know, he yeah. was he was kind of on the lower end of things, but then, like, Raimi did something with the character to give him emotional mm -hmm. depth. And I, I actually have been watching a lot of the um, Batman the Animated Series, and they did the same thing for Doctor Freeze or Mister Freeze. Oh, or, yeah, they. Um, I mean, I I'm I'm not as huge of a of a Batman guy, mm -hmm. um, and that's I, I mean that's that's me. I'm only saying that because I do I do love Batman. Yeah, he's probably like he's probably like my second favorite character, but I I, I don't feel like I know enough about him that I can. Well, like, you you know the story about Mister Freeze about like his wife and everything being frozen, yeah. and he, oh, yeah. he's trying to like find a cure like, for the disease that came from the cartoon, not the comics. Yeah, and 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 I and I didn't really watch the cartoon, and I yeah. kind of wish that I did because I was just like I like Spider Man or whatever, right? And it was just like, ugh, just like I mean, I've, I've watched the, all of the '94 Spider Man. Here, so exactly like, yeah. yeah oh yeah that was my shit bro like shit yeah. rocked, man but like like that uh batman animated show like pioneered so much of like um what made uh what makes batman batman to this day like oh, that absolutely, show man. created harley quinn and like that's that's insane because that's it, she's such a like a staple of a character like From the that, cartoon you know yeah. And it's just like, oh, like, I never would have guessed, you know, that this character didn't come from the comic book. I would have like, oh, that's always been a classic, you know, Batman character or whatever. And mm -hmm. it's just like, no, it's just like this, this, the show did it. And that's just like, that's amazing. And so one day I do want to like pay my respects and like watch the show all the way through and like, 
you know um because it because it because it deserves it because it's it's an amazing show yeah but. it's it's absolutely held up in every regard like there, there are times i'd be watching like x-men and like 94 spider-man and being like mm -hmm. okay there there are moments there's some really good moments and there's some like okay there's some cartoony like you know moments and everything and like batman has some cartoony moments and some episodes that are weaker, weaker than others but man when that shit's good it's like unbelievably good because yeah, when like watching uncut. the um, the documentary about it, they said like up till that time, they were all working in the 80s animation era, which was like, you can't show violence. Even bad guys, you have to show that they're okay if they get beaten to a pummel. And they're oh, like, yeah. we're gonna um, team up with Spielberg like and Warner Brothers. And Spielberg's gonna foot the bill for fucking everything on this and say, mm -hmm. hey, do what you want. And the execs will listen to him. So the execs listen to him. And then he says, hey, do whatever you want. And when Batman came out, there's guns, there's violence, yeah. there's incredible storytelling for, for villains you would never think twice about, like Clayface, Mr. Freeze, mm -hmm. the Joker has some moments, Harley isn't quite as, you know, well, well Harley was in the, the thing, but like the Joker is not quite as like, it's just so weird, man. Even even the interpersonal relationships between like Batman and, and like and Robin and Robin's like, you see later that like, oh, he's, Kind of feeling weird about Bruce doing a certain thing and everything, mm -hmm. and uh, going into the later seasons, they go into like the the new adventures or whatever. Um, yeah, he's then Nightwing, and has kind of this weird like, I've grown up, you're not my dad anymore kind of attitude towards like Batman. But you yeah. you saw that building up to that point before they did that. You know? Yeah, so it's not like this random thing where it just kind of comes out of nowhere. It's just like again. I think it ties back into what we we're talking about earlier, yeah. where it's just like, really, if you take the time to develop these things, like they will be beloved, you know, forever. Like it lasts yeah. forever. You know, if you, if you um, believe in what you're doing, that's really the most you can do as an artist. Everything else is just up to to fate. Yeah, to fate to people to see if they dig it or not. Um, and that's funny too, because like I know I know that that '90 Spider-Man show had like a lot of censorship too, because like they couldn't say. Um, the word kill yeah so like, destroy oh, it was gonna, destroy it was destroy yeah, yeah. and like I think spider-man throws one punch in the whole show damn um, did he really i think yeah i think it's in the episode where he fights the spot um i never thought it, about that holy shit yeah yeah like, yeah he, he he either webs people or you know throws something at them or, or whatever but he he throws one punch in the whole show and it's when he um he's fighting the spot it's it's kind of made into a gag and that's i think that's why they were able to get away with it um that's because he, crazy. You know, he punches one of his portals or whatever and then it punches him in the face yeah he like throws one but like doesn't even hit him he like punches himself <clears throat> at that point yeah 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 and so um yeah and like and just to think like okay and now here's fucking batman that's just like okay this is like the real cartoon this is like the real show you yeah, know that like, shit that shit was wild there's like actual guns in that shit that mm -hmm. batman's punching people fucking five that's times right. per scene oh actual like violence and everything but like it's crazy because it made such an impact on me visually but then mm -hmm. going back it's like oh the amount of adult content in here that's not like it's not like adult to be adult it's just really good storytelling not confined to the restraints of a children's cartoon well, it's just, it, it, and that's exactly it. It's just like, yeah. okay, just because it's technically animation, it doesn't mean I'm going to treat you any less of a, like an intelligent human being or whatever. Like yeah. we're going to treat, you know, our demographic is kids because it's superheroes. And that's just, that's not to say that adults can enjoy it either. But like, you know, that's the target demographic, but I'm not going to treat you like a moron. Like, oh, this is a cartoon and whatever, who cares? Like it's, and those are the ones that we're, we're still talking about to this day. You know, yeah. it just, it, they really do. Um, stand the test of time. It's just that simple, man. Yeah. All right, we'll get to some some closing, not closing thoughts exactly, but a, a few more little topics here. Um, let's see. I'll ask this: How'd you find me? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> um, uh, the way, <clears throat> excuse me, the way that I found you. <clears throat> was um through my spotify um so like you know I, I check on you know my you know spotify and how it's doing and mm. what tracks are doing well or whatever and then I, I would always see like um you know listeners also listen to 
And that's where you came up. Yeah, and you appeared on mine. <clears throat> oh, sick. Okay, cool. That's yeah, that's, awesome. like, that's where I found you. It was the exact same way. Okay, sick. Because then I'm like, okay, cool. So then, you know, I would go through them and I click yours. Um, and I like uh, your page because you had a lot of Sonic stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, naturally. Um, and you were doing like, I don't know, like the cool Sonic stuff. Like, mm. um, like the like the song that plays um, in Adventure 2 where he jumps out of the helicopter. Yeah, yeah. The Let's make it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I never would have thought to cover that. And it's fucking sick. And I'm like, and oh my god. And it amazing. segues into um because it plays a little bit of the, the cart melody. Mm -hmm. So I did that and it segues into Chasing Drive because it has yeah, the same yeah. melody in it. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, oh my god, like that's what? I don't <laughs> that's amazing. Holy shit, you know? And I'm like, wow, this guy's fucking rolls. Like, that's amazing. Um, so that's 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 where I discovered you. Um and I, and I felt so shitty, right? Because I, I like I don't do like not that I don't do. It sounds like super prima donna, but like mm -hmm. I'm really bad at social media. Like I'm really bad at like I don't know because it's just like it's, I, know, I just I've just come to terms that I'm just like well it's just not good for my brain and I try to like yeah no I'm really in the exact now. same page you know um and uh, I was like well I'm gonna give him a follow like on Twitter or something and I went to go follow you and I was like oh my god he's already following me and I never followed him back <laughs> I don't even recall I don't even recall I was like oh fuck I felt so bad I was like oh no um so you know then you know um wanting to part of my other thing that I've been wanting to do more of is um um like collabs mm. right um because it's something I've never really done uh, you know I did you know I've done it here and there with like you know, with, with Georgie singing on Can You Feel the Sunshine and, um, you know, I, I, not video game related, but, you know, I had a couple of, of other friends um, play on this uh, yellow card thing I did last mm -hmm. year. You know, I got a singer and a drummer and all these things, and it was this huge project. Um, but, you know, those were all those are all local people in my scene that that I that I'm friends with and I know. And yeah, you can contact rather, rather easily and meet up and, and get stuff done. Correct. And so, you know, I, I really wanted to kind of, kind of like broaden the horizon and try to reach out to other like fellow like like Sonic creators and, you know, see if, you know, they'd be down to like to do stuff. Um, because I never thought of myself of like as like, you know, this is the, the low self-esteem artist in me is like, well, you know, they're, you know, they probably don't want to. They're probably going to say no or like, you know, I'm not good oh, enough. Or, no. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just like. And, and I'm trying to be better at like, like just ask. And if they say no, then like, whatever, then, then just move on. Um, and so that's when I've been kind of like, it, it was kind of a, instead of just like, you know, um, like rating your DMs or whatever and be like, hey, let's do something together. Like, <laughs> I really tried to like, to show like, you know, hey, like to show some, you know, you know, to show support first and like, hey, you know, listen to your music. Hey, this track is great. Mm -hmm. Like, great. You know, this, this, this remix is awesome. And you check out a stream and, you know, to, to kind of support first, I feel like, is like the right way to approach something like that. And yeah, maybe, it's you know, it's fucking wild that like when I started, I kind of like I've been around, but like I was starting like hyper focus into one thing, you know, mm -hmm. and um, like you started liking my stuff. And I was like, oh, that's fucking look, look at your channel. I'm like, oh, he's this guy. No, yeah, he's this guy. He's like, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, is that, that's fucking cool. That's fucking neat. And then like for a birthday post or something like victor mcknight will be like hey yo bro hey happy birthday bro i'm like are you listening to my shit <laughs> yes like and yeah and that was another one too where he like he followed me too and i'm like oh my god like what the heck like and that's that's like victor i'm like i'm like i that'll never happen like you know like if i reach out like i don't think that's gonna happen at all um but like yeah it's just like it's just crazy that like i don't know for me sometimes this the the community can seem like a little like um, maybe intimidating, right? Yeah, like a, maybe a bit standoffish, depending, right? Right, because and I, and I think it stems from again like a form of uh, it's out of love, right? Because sometimes it doesn't feel um, very inviting, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's like, well, I love Sonic so much, so like there's no way you could love Sonic as much as me or whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever exactly. No, real, real shit, real shit. You know, and it's just hard to like, you know, like I, that's the vibe I get sometimes when I'm on like on like Twitter or something. So it's just hard to like approach somebody um, and feel like I don't know, like I'm like I'm not trying to step in. You know, I I love Sonic very much. Mm -hmm. I think about him every day or whatever. You know, yep. it's just mm -hmm. like 
I, I don't think any like anybody can say otherwise. But that's not to say that like, oh yeah, they're way bigger Sonic fans than I am. Like, they're and people are like, oh, did you? Uh, I played the Sonic and Garfield pack, and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, or or whatever. You well, know, not everything's like, oh. worth playing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or like, <laughs> or like I've never or I've never gotten into um, any of the comic books. Right? Yeah, and that's like a huge like that's a huge like. There's, there's so much lore for Sonic in in that alone, and I've never I've never taken the time to to get into it, and so you could call me not being a big enough Sonic fan for mm -hmm. not getting into that or whatever, but you know, I never I never really I never want to think about it in that way to where it's just like, yeah, you know, I don't want it to to it to feel like it's standoffish or whatever, but like you know, people love this this brand so much, you know, that like sometimes it feels like you know. Um, maybe I'm invading a space that I don't belong in or something, or I don't know, maybe I'm just being in my head about it, but, um, you know, but it just, uh, it just, uh, but you know, you, you, at the end of the day, you, you reach out or whatever, and you're going to gel with wh who you're going to gel with. Yeah. You know, and it like, until today, I've never talked to you in like via phone call. Oh yeah, no, this is the first time we're talking, like right now. And we have been going on for three hours maybe yeah we're, we're getting real close we're getting real close um and that's great i think that's amazing i think that yeah. shows like you know that's oh that's awesome like we can vibe and like you know we're gonna we can do cool stuff and, and you know i know i had reached out and you're very quick to, you were very quick to like yeah let's do something and and you know you sent me some stuff and and i apologize for not you know hitting you back oh, you're right fine. away you're fine, bro. You're i really fine. was going through like you know i've been on this kind of like high of trying to get better in my brain and mm -hmm. like it really tanked like during the holidays or whatever like mm -hmm. yeah just the holiday kind of like depression stuff like totally get yeah that. december like january we're just like i really don't know why because like nothing was really wrong surface level but like yeah. i was really having a hard time just like just like getting by you mm -hmm. know and so i really had to like put a lot of things like kind of on hold just to like you know just to kind of compose myself and find you know find my my rhythm out of that funk or whatever yeah um but like, I don't know. But the, but the other thing too is like I have to remember like they're, they're like everybody's great and, and like the community is great and it shouldn't be this thing where it's just like kind of intimidating and just like yeah like reach out and like like make some stuff together like and that's and that's gonna help everybody you know yeah and you can create new relationships and like you just and you never know where where things could go you know yeah it's one of those things where like going back to uh, the the way uh, like prior mentioned uh, topic of like, you know, when we're doing our thing, it, it, everything kind of feels like a competition, right? And, yeah, and exactly. For, and for me, it was like not anything of a diss to anybody, but I was like, if I can do it myself to some degree, like play guitar or like play mm -hmm. bass on something or whatever, like I can program my drums, I can attempt singing on some of my stuff. And like, if mm -hmm. I need a female vocalist, I can find a female vocalist, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and go from there. But I was like, if I don't need... Like, I don't see the point of doing a collab with somebody that's doing borderline the exact same thing I'm doing. And looking back, that's kind of, there's no fun in that. Yeah. You know, like, there, there's absolutely no fun in that. On that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Where it's like, also, you know. Say, uh, the Nathan Penguin commented, Sonic Gatekeeper's mad that you don't live, uh, breathe, and piss on it. That's true. Hey, Nathan. What's <laughs> <popping, bro? laughs> I know, Nathan. <laughs> That's hilarious. But yeah, man, no, I totally feel you on that. Yeah, that just seems kind of like a silly way of thinking about things. You know? Yeah, because you're so, it's like, well, I gotta be this. And then it's like, well, now it's like, I'm I'm like, for me to grow and for me to do that, I have to talk with people. And like, we may, in the grand scheme of things, maybe only do a handful of things together, naturally, you know, sure. as it goes. You never know. But, but the thing is, is like just communicating with people, breaking down the barriers between people as much as possible and having fun with it and like man there's i'm not saying i do everything you do because i feel like there's strengths and weaknesses like between us that if we were to get together we could absolutely just destroy something absolutely you know absolutely. There's, there's, some, there's something really special there to be made that i'm really yeah, excited to try out some, at some point yeah no I, I totally agree um and uh you know that's definitely the path i, I think i want to ride more to where it's just like to, maybe to break the norm because like you know there is such a thing as like sonic gatekeepers you yeah. know like 
Just like, I mean, just look at that first movie and have everybody freak the fuck out over the design. I like, know, you know, right? It was, in, in hindsight, it was for the better, but at the same time, it's like, oh my god, like, there's there's just such a, like, you know, can I have a piece of the pie, too? Like, oh, like can no, I enjoy okay. it my way? And yeah, you know? it's, just, it's just, I don't know. So, like, yeah, I don't know. I guess on, on that note, like, I don't know. I, I'm, I guess I'm trying to push through life with with more positivity and, mm. and open mindedness and and you know and to kind of treat like I don't know like the Sonic thing specifically as a as a cool way of like um of like having new experiences and meeting new people and like yeah. like doing new things and finding new ways to be inspired and like you know looking at something like like yourself where in the past maybe I would have looked at you like competition like we were talking about before. yeah like oh my god this guy this fucking sick ass sonic shit i suck like there's no way my shit's gonna be as cool as his or whatever but now it's just like no his stuff is sick and i think my stuff is sick because if i didn't think it was sick you wouldn't be I making wouldn't it. Put it out i wouldn't be making it yeah. so like why not let's make some stuff together you know yeah. so like i don't know that's just like that's just kind of like been the vibe lately and it's just been like i don't know very peaceful and like um like fulfilling even though we haven't even made anything anything yet you know it's yeah. just like you know and then when the day comes I, i'm sure it'll be fun and like yeah i'm i'm very much looking forward to like the future and stuff which is like cool because i hadn't i haven't really felt like that like in a while you yeah know? no kidding bro yeah so yeah hell yeah bro let me see um Yeah, bro. Hey, you got any closing thoughts? No, um, I think that's a good spot to wrap it. I think I'm going to probably go have dinner or something now, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I think that sounds good. But um, yeah, dude, um, thank you for having me. Thank you for, for, for reaching out and being patient with me. Because um, I know um, I've been a little slow with, with progress and doing things. Oh, yeah, no, bro. Uh, the, the pleasure's all mine. Don't worry about anything. It's It's been an absolute blast getting to know you and talking. And uh, it's been so long. I've gotten to talk to somebody about like actual talk to a guitarist <laughs> and like an actual like you know guitarist way. It's been so long. Actually, it's, it's pretty. Yeah, I have to say, like, it is sick to like. And and not only that, but like a guitarist that like kind of thinks like you, where it's like, hey, yeah. like, I'm doing the IR thing too, and I'm like in the box too, and like, hey, like I I love Sonic, but not everything is perfect, right? Mm -hmm. And that's like kind of i don't know in my, in my experience a little rare to find yeah you, you find know, people just like I'm, vouching for things it's like oh this is great and it's like hey bro secret rings is great <laughs> the gameplay fucking sucks but i love the art style and like yeah, the music yeah, exactly gameplay exactly. sucks it's like you know you know and it's hard sometimes it's hard to like kind of have to walk on eggshells a little bit like with those sorts of things so i'm glad that like i can say things like hey I didn't vibe with this and it doesn't like set you off or whatever. Oh, yeah, and no, very, absolutely forgot. I'll give a shit. And that's very comforting in finding <laughs> in, 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 a, in a fellow uh, Sonic aficionado. So. Yeah, it's it's really fucking rare, man. Yeah. But yeah, man, thank you so much, dude. It's, it, it was a blast. Absolutely, man. I really appreciate it. All right, gang. That was Jerry Trevino. All of his stuff. The link is in the description below. Please follow his shit. We've been playing his shit literally all stream. Amazing shit. Go follow him. Until then, guys, take care. See you next time. Peace. <laughs>